And on this Veterans Day, we honor men and women of all uniforms. But for a few hours this Saturday afternoon, it's football that takes center stage. Steeped in tradition, success at Notre Dame is held on a higher plane. Rockney, Leahy, Parsichian laid a path which others have struggled to follow. But one of the Irish's own has returned, and with him a swagger, a confidence held so snugly in the palm of a clenched fist. But true success rests on the golden arm of a Midwestern boy. Notre Dame has scored! Brady Quinn does it again! Each passing Saturday seems to bring new heights. Brady Quinn now becomes the 32nd player to pass for 10,000 yards in his career. Surrounded by an array of weapons, Quinn will need each and every one of them as the Irish take to the Rockies. The Falcons are not without a few options of their own. Following the orders of a legendary coach, Fisher DeBerry has Air Force in step. In September, a single play, a two-point option was all that stood in the way of the Falcons flying home victorious against 11th-ranked Tennessee. Hardy pitches back. Tennessee stops him at the five. The Falcons of Air Force take the fight to the ninth-ranked Irish next on CSTV. On this gorgeous Saturday afternoon, the Wings of Blue have dropped in on us here at the United States Air Force Academy for this big Saturday afternoon of football. Number nine, Notre Dame, with one loss in the season, taking on the four and four Falcons of Air Force. Hello, everybody. Alongside Trev Alberts, I am Tom Hart. You know about the Notre Dame mystique. You know about their possible Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in Brady Quinn. He's put up some great numbers since starting as a freshman. But, Trev, the question, what separates Brady Quinn from other great quarterbacks? Good question, Tom. You know, you talk to coaches across the country, and Fisher DeBerry, the head coach at Air Force, he says what separates Tom Brady is the way he sees the field. And obviously, you can see the numbers, almost 11,000 yards passing, 83 touchdown passes. But I think if you just put on the game film and look at some of his action, you see how he spreads the ball and how he sees the field. Here, the little crossing route right across the center of the field to a wide receiver. Now you get a tight end involved out into the flat. And then, of course, one of his favorites, Jeff Samarja, as he comes across the middle there. So he gets everyone involved. He sees the field. And, you know, Tom, I think really a key in this game is John Carlson at tight end. Eight catches for 91 yards. And, you know, here's a, here's a young man. And I think when you look at Air Force, they love to get their safeties and corners involved, trying to cover McKnight and Samarja on the outside. And they were very honest with, with us, was the Air Force coaches. We will have linebackers man-to-man -man against the tight ends and running backs of Notre Dame. It's a very difficult matchup for Air Force. Air Force certainly comes in as the underdog, but for head coach Fisher to Barry, he's hoping for a storybook ending. I certainly believe very strongly myself in the uh, in the David and Goliath story. I've been where uh, that was supposed to have taken place. I visualize that myself, and uh, certainly believe very strongly in 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 the reality of that. And I believe that uh, you're capable of doing anything. If it's a David versus Goliath matchup, here is your David, Air Force quarterback Sean Carney. Trav, the question: Will he be able to show off his slingshot today? Well, I think that's a real story in this game. Obviously, Sean Carney does this terrific well they run the triple option they run the ball but they'll have to take chances in the passing game against this Notre Dame defense Brady Quinn and the Fighting Irish are here we're just about ready for kickoff as Notre Dame takes on Air Force and the Falcons take the field at the Air Force Academy and on this Veterans Day Saturday we mix reflection with recreation as F-16 Falcons make a pass here at Falcon Stadium We've got more to come. Let's join now our third member of our broadcast crew, Anne Marie Anderson, down on the sidelines. Well, you guys are talking about David and Goliath. Let me paint a picture for you. Brady Quinn at six foot four, 233 pounds, is as tall as or taller than every defensive lineman Air Force has, save one. On the other side, Sean Carney, 5'10, 190. He is outweighed by an average of 88 pounds per man by Notre Dame's line. That is David and Goliath. All right, thank you very much, Anne-Marie. 
And uh, the David in this situation, as we talked about, Sean Carney, an Irish Catholic boy from the Midwest who thought perhaps he should have been first team All-State back in high school. Instead, Brady Quinn took those honors. Look at the size differences. The Notre Dame defensive line, 6'3", 278. And Sean Carney, 5'10", 190, all the better to get lost in the middle, perhaps running that option offense. Notre Dame will receive no shocker there for the 10th time in 10 games. Charlie Weiss will start off with the ball. The great offensive mind in his second season at South Bend. 17 wins against just four losses, including one setback this season. The veteran on the Air Force sideline, Fisher DeBerry, in his 23rd season at the helm of the Falcons. This kickoff will, with altitude, go right through the end zone. And Brady Quinn and company will start this game from the 20 yard line. We've told you about all of the offensive weapons. Well, you have to have a guy to get the ball to those offensive weapons. A starter since the fourth game of his freshman year and a 64% completion percentage with over 2,500 yards this year. And Tom, I think probably the most interesting thing and impressive thing about those numbers was the only four interceptions. 25 touchdowns, four interceptions. Remember, three of those interceptions came against Michigan, then won the next week against Michigan State. It's been a long time since Brady Quinn has turned the ball over. From the 20, the lone back, Darius Walker. Quinn to throw on first down over the middle and deep. And the catch made all the way to midfield. It's Jeff Samarja. Take a look at the offensive weapons at Brady Quinn's disposal. Samarja with his 50th catch of the year, one of four with more than 47 catches. They start with the two men at offense here, and Quinn quick to the line. You see the sense of urgency. Coach Weiss talked about how they'd have less plays because Air Force runs that triple option. They need to make every possession count. The sense of urgency here in the two-minute early in the first quarter. Throwing again, Samarja wide open, finds himself free, and Jeff Samarja takes it in from 50 yards. Notre Dame is on the board less than a minute into this one. Well, I guess that didn't take long, did it, Tom? Two big passing plays already from Brady Quinn to Jeff Samarja working outside on Garrett Reebok. See it right there. And Jeff Samarja just runs by. Garrett Reebok stays in the flat as the fans celebrate. And it's an early touchdown for this Notre Dame Irish offense. Samarja at 2 6 5, 2 16, and somehow easily lost. Carl Joya on to attempt the extra point. It is good. And 54 seconds in on this Veterans Day, Jeff Samarja, the senior from Valparaiso, hooks up with Brady Quinn for the ninth time this season. Samarja takes one to the house. 80-yard drive in two plays, and Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator at Air Force, told us this week the most important thing and where this Falcon defense really improved this year over last year was the fact that they hadn't given up the big play obviously here in the first quarter two huge plays by Jeff Samarja these are the weapons at Brady Quinn's disposal Samarja with his 50th catch now Raymond McKnight John Carlson the tight end is coming to his own and Darius Walker a great option out of the backfield and I think Darius Walker is often the forgotten guy you talk about the wide receivers and the tight end but Darius Walker is that guy any time Brady Quinn feels pressure or needs to check down it's pretty nice to have a guy like Darius Walker out in the flat and his ability to make people miss 54 seconds off the clock and plenty of Notre Dame faithful have made the trip here to Colorado Springs Brian Burkhart handles the kickoffs Spencer Armstrong fields it on the run looking for a block he'll make it to the 18 yard line and now the question is, can Air Force answer behind the direction of junior quarterback Sean Carney? 521 yards rushing and six, ten, six touchdowns. But we talked about in the open, Tom, taking chances in the passing game. Remember, they played Tennessee earlier in the season, and Sean Carney was 7 of 9 for 127 yards. The point is, they're not going to throw the ball a lot, but they have to throw it efficiently against this Notre Dame defense. Remember, Notre Dame faced the option a few weeks ago against Navy. They, however, think they have not properly prepared as Chad Hall takes the option pitch and a gain of four, but a big hit on the back end of that. Take a look now at the starters presented by Starter. And for Air Force offensively, 
a good line. Cray, the left tackle, big at 6'8", 295. And we've already seen Chad Hall get an early touch. I think he's a real key in this offense. All 5'8", 180 pounds of him. And we talked about the 5.6-yard average. Already five yards on first down. They'll take that all day against this Notre Dame defense. Hall, a junior from Atlanta, goes in motion. The pitch to Hall, looking near side, has nothing as he is brought down at the line by Chris Furprom. And now, let's take a look at the starters for Notre Dame, brought to you by Starter, and across that line, as you see, Chris Furham on one side, Abby Amari on the other side, and Maurice Crum Jr., very good linebacker. Yeah, 71 tackles and three sacks on the season, playing that option. I think that Crum's a real important cognate of that defensive middle linebacker, stopping the fullback of this Falcon offense. Maurice Crum Jr., 71 tackles leading the team. Chris Fromm with the tackle on the first play. Now Carney will put it in the air and incomplete. Overshoots Victor Thompson. You saw there on third down, it was third and seven. That's what this Air Force offense cannot be in. They want to be in third and manageable. They lead the country in third down offense because normally they're in third or two or three. See Carney as he rolls to his right, looking out there for Victor Thompson just outside of his outstretched arms. And it's a three and out for this Falcon offense. Zach Sasser handles the punting duties for Air Force, averaging 42 yards a kick, and the always dangerous Tom Zivikowski set to return. A short kick. This is how Sasser started against Army last week, and it goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. And so Brady Quinn and company will get another shot at it. Already up 7-0 on this connection with Samarja. Welcome back to Colorado Springs, 7 0 Notre Dame, and CSTV would like to extend a very special welcome to service women and service men around the world watching today's game on the American Forces Network. We appreciate all that you're doing to defend our great country. Brady Quinn talked in our open and talked this week about how he loves to start the game with the ball. They score on their first possession and now to the ground for the first time, and Darius Walker takes it to midfield. Let's take a look at the Notre Dame starters. Presented by Starter. A senior laden line, four of the five are upperclassmen, and in the backfield, Darius Walker with his first carry. He can also catch the ball out of the backfield. We talked about the multi threat that he is catching out of the backfield, but also running he averages 4.3 yards a, a carry. But when you have Brady Quinn at quarterback, you know they're going to challenge defenses through the air. Walker, a junior out of Buford High School in Norrisville, Georgia. He gets another carry. He's got a first down, and Walker finally corralled at the 42-yard line. Great job that time by Bob Morton, the right guard, big number 76, just pulls to the left with a terrific block, and Darius Walker gets behind big Bob Morton and gets a nice gain, and it's another first down for Notre Dame. They stick with a two-minute offense. Folks question Charlie Weiss at the outset of the North Carolina game. The Tar Heels a defense had struggled against the run, yet they came out throwing the ball. He said, we expected the blitz. Air Force had struggled against the pass this year. And so they come out in the two-minute and try to get Quinn and company into an early roll. And Quinn will go to the air. This is the first catch for Raymond McKnight. McKnight slips a tackle and has a gain of nine. Will leave second and one for Notre Dame. Let's now meet the starters for the Air Force Falcons defensively, presented by starter. And on the front line, Gilberto Perez makes a move this week. He goes into tackle. Yeah, captain on this team, Fisher DeBerry, says probably his best defensive player has to move back inside. They've had all kinds of injuries, both on their offense and defensive line. Perez will be a real key. John Raybould in the defensive backfield plays the Falcon position, a hybrid safety. There's Perez, number 55, had been at defensive end, now moves inside. Quinn wants to throw play action, plenty of weapons, good coverage, and the lap pattern turns into a first down for Raymond McKnight, and he is down to the 13-yard line, brought down on that play by Chris Huckins. One of the things I'm noticing right away about this Falcon defense is just how far off the corners and safeties are playing. A little play action, Quinn looks right, then goes back, and no defensive player in the area. And Huckins finally comes up and makes the play, but way too much cushion for Raymond McKnight out there on the left side of that offensive line. Raymond McKnight has now tied Tom Gatewood. Tied for first all-time at Notre Dame with his 157th career catch. First and 10, Quinn to the air. Samarja has the catch. Doesn't have the footwork. He is dropped down at the four-yard line. Good 
tackle by Nathan Smith, the junior from San Antonio. It's always such a mismatch when you have a guy like Jeff Samarja and the size that he has lined up right down here as he runs a simple out. Corner does a pretty good job of trying to cover him and actually does a great job of bringing him down. But Quinn knows exactly where he wants to go. If he gets man coverage on the outside with Jeff Samarja, he'll take it all day against these corners of Air Force. But a nice tackle by Nathan Smith. 91% scoring in the red zone this season for Notre Dame. Charlie Weiss, as all coaches, wants more touchdowns and field goals. Walker stopped at the one-yard line. Ball came loose, but ruled down. Remember last week against Army, first drive of the game, Air Force scooped up a fumble at the goal line and returned it 98 yards. Here's the replay, and Darius Walker hits the hole in there and reaches in, trying to get the ball over the goal line. Obviously not a fumble, and Coach Weiss talked about his team and the fact that six of the nine games they've played this season They've had zero turnovers, and that's been a real story. He said it starts with Darius Walker and the way that he controls and hangs on to the football. It was good enough to get a fresh set of downs. First and goal now for Brady Quinn, who has hit on all of his first five passes. Samarja shuffles in motion. Play action, looking for Samarja and the tight end. Quinn will dump it to Carlson. He is in. Touchdown, Notre Dame. John Carlson with his fourth touchdown and great patience shown by Brady Quinn. That's the word I was going to say, Tom. Great word. It was the patience of Brady Quinn that time. The Falcons had it covered. If you see him here, as he rolls out to his right, Nathan Smith has Carlton covered and comes off just a second as it looked like Brady Quinn was going to try to run it into the end zone. And Nathan Smith comes off the tight end and Carlson has a touchdown already now. Potentially could be 14 to nothing, not even midway through the first quarter. John Carlson with the touchdown catch. And Carl Joya puts it through. Brady Quinn has thrown for two touchdowns. Midway through the first quarter. And the Irish opening up a 14 to nothing lead on Air Force. And the VW tailgate rolling on this afternoon here in Colorado Springs. They have packed all of the parking lots around Falcon Stadium. Number nine, Notre Dame on top of Air Force, 14 to nothing with 9.21 to go in the first quarter. And the Air Force faithful hoping Sean Carney and company can make something happen on their second possession after going three and out. Armstrong with blockers in front, burst through the 20. He's to the 30, and Armstrong takes it to the 35-yard line. A 14 to nothing, Notre Dame lead two passing touchdowns for Brady Quinn as we take a look at the score a moment ago by John Carlson. We talk about the difficult matchups. There's John Carlson at tight end. He's simply going to delay a little bit, act like he's going to block, then go back to the outside. The difficult matchups, Nathan Smith is a corner, obviously much smaller. He comes off the tight end for just a moment, and the patience of Brady Quinn to wait till John Carlson comes open. It's 14 to nothing, Notre Dame. Carney with the pitch to Hall on first down. That picks up six and will leave second and four. And a flag coming in at the tail end of that. Looks like John Ryan will be flagged. We'll wait in here. Personal foul against Trevor Laws. Senior from Minnesota and Fisher DeBerry in his 23rd season here at the Academy, the winningest coach in school history. And of those 169 wins, three of them have come against the Fighting Irish, including 10 years ago, an overtime upset. Air Force pass midfield for the first time, thanks to the penalty. And Sean Carney running the offense. He will throw. And he goes down the sideline complete. First down, Air Force, all the way to the 20-yard line. Bo Suter, the slot back, with just his fourth catch of the year. Trev, they don't throw to the running backs much. They don't throw to the running backs at all. They throw to Victor Thompson a little bit. Little play action to fullback. All you have to do is freeze those safeties and corners for just a second. See Tom Zibikowski right there. He gets behind Zibikowski, and it's a first down for, Bo, for Sean Carney. They now go trips and try to keep it up the middle, but find nothing. 
And Fisher to Barry said they would have a few things up their sleeve as Derek Landry makes the tackle. And they need a few things up their sleeve in this type of game. Yeah, he talked about taking chances, whether it was onside kicks, whether it was throwing. You know, look, what do they have to lose? They're a 4-4 four and four football team playing a terrific team in Notre Dame with one loss. So they are going to take some chances. But that last play was at the key for Notre Dame's defense. Derek Landry stopping the fullback and forcing Air Force to get to the perimeter. Second and 11 now. They give to the fullback, and they go right up the middle with it. Just off tackle inside the 15, and forward progress will finally stop Ryan Williams. And always fight in these Falcons. Williams still had those legs churning. It's interesting talking to Notre Dame players this week when we went to South Bend and Victor Abriamere, their defensive end, with 10 sacks. And we said, do you like playing against this Falcon offense? He said, we hate it. It's not fun at all because you have this consistent running right at you. And look at the effort by Ryan Williams as he just keeps his legs going. And then Duque finally brings him down at safety. Third and three to the short side, snuffed out. It'll bring up fourth down on that stop of so Chad Hall. Great fill that time by Mike Richardson at right corner. He's going to sit back there, a little fake to the fullback. Tackle takes that. You pitch it to the outside, and then you got to get Mike Richardson, the corner, to come up. And look, the open field tackle right there on Chad Hall. It brings up fourth and four, and Air Force will elect to attempt the field goal. This will be a 32-yard attempt from Zach Sasser. Sasser, seven of nine on the season. He made his first field goals, the first four field goals of the year. And it's good. Air Force on the board as the Falcons use a personal foul penalty to move down the field, and they find their first score of the game. You're watching the Rumble in the Rockies on CSTV. CSTV salutes the men and women of our armed forces. A gorgeous day in Colorado Springs. Welcome back to CSTV's Football Nation as the VW tailgate rolls on. Number nine, Notre Dame on top, 14 to three. 620 to go in the first quarter. You know, Tom, we talked to Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator of Air Force, and he really thought that they needed to do a good job of not giving up the big plays, keeping everything in front of them. And, so far, Brady Quinn is 6 of 6 for 119 yards. No pressure on Brady Quinn all kinds of time. And he told us this week what he really enjoys about the position. He feels like a surgeon back there, just dissecting that defense. David Grimes will take a knee in the end zone on a strong kick from Zach Sasser. Time now to take a look at the Xbox Live big play replay. And we've got two plays for you, the first two plays from this Notre Dame offense. Again, Samarja just right down the middle of that field. A terrific throw by Brady Quinn. And then again, a little pressure from the outside, but Jeff Samarja just gets past Garrett Reebok, who not sure if he was playing zone, everyone was else playing man, but miscommunication. And Jeff Samarja gets behind that defense in the first two drives, 119 yards and two touchdowns for Brady Quinn. And Notre Dame averaging 15 yards of play on their first two possessions. They keep it on the ground, and this is a six-yard gain for James Aldridge. And Charlie Weiss talked to us about Aldridge this week. He likes him. He thinks he's really on the come. He's the big bruiser. Six-foot, 215-pound freshman, and they like him sort of as that change-up pace at running back for their offense. Notre Dame player down on the field, and it is the tight end, John Carlson. Carlson's... Pass catching prowess has been at the forefront this season, but one thing that one area they said he can improve on is his blocking, specifically his run blocking. He's on the left side of your screen. Looks like he just got caught up in a little bit of the traffic that time. Be an offensive lineman. And that's a difficult thing as a player. Sometimes you know, obviously you can see with your vision what's happening in front of you and get yourself ready for what's going to happen. But behind you, so many times those offensive linemen come behind you and clip the back of your legs. And Carlson helped to his feet. A senior from Tiny Litchfield, Minnesota. 
And I think he's been the reason, Tom, why this offense has taken the next level. I mean, they had good tight end play last year with Anthony Fasano, but the ability of John Carlson to stretch the field, I think, makes this offense different. Well, for more, let's check in with Anne Marie. Well, you guys may have noticed these tiny stickers on the back of the helmets for both teams. They're in honor of the 66th Squadron of the Air Force. They lost 12 members six years ago in a helicopter crash. Greg Lewis, son of Notre Dame defensive coach Bill Lewis, died in that crash more after the play. And they go right back to James Aldridge. Anne-Marie. Greg Lewis was a walk-on at at Air Force. So a few months ago, his brother Jeff decided that he wanted to try to honor him at this game. So he first sent an email to Charlie Weiss, got some approval from Charlie Weiss. Charlie Weiss and, co and company contacted Air Force Academy. They approved it. They took it to the NCAA and got this approved. Ironically, the 66 Squadron specializes in rescuing downed air crews, and they died while practicing maneuvers to do just that. All right, thank you very much, Anne-Marie. This is a key third and one now, and Quinn will keep, and he gets plenty and takes it up to the 34-yard line. You know, about that story, and just to put a, a, a ribbon on it, Charlie Weiss was asked this week uh, what Bill Lewis means to him and, and the loss of his son, and, and Charlie said, hey, I was there the day after it happened. Bill Lewis was a coach with the Dolphins. The Patriots were down in Miami. They talked pregame on the field, and Bill Lewis told him about his family's loss. Brady Quinn has yet to put the ball in the air on this drive. They've gone instead to James Aldridge. Our first and 10 line brought to you today by Affleck. Quinn will go to the air, but he's flush. No flag on a look to behold, and here comes the yellow hanky late, and Quinn dragged down from behind at the 40-yard line. And that Notre Dame offensive line flag. This one will be going backwards. They're going to get a hold that time of the offensive line. Pretty good coverage that time by Air Force. Just went back into a zone. And Brady Quinn didn't see anybody open initially, and then when he went to roll to the right to buy some more time, an offensive lineman comes up with a hole trying to protect him. During the play, holy, number 76 offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Bob Morton, the right guard, flagged one of four seniors on that line, and he's next to freshman Sam Young, the right tackle. Right there's big old Bob Morton right there, waits. And Julian Madrid's coming on a little bit of blitz that time, and yeah, hanging on for dear life. That's a hold all the way. Tried to slow down Gilberto Perez, the senior from Tampa. There's Morton, his late father Bob played football at Rutgers. First and 20 now for Brady Quinn and the Fighting Irish. Look at the cushion here on the outside for these wide receivers. Aldridge with the carry. Aldridge with a nice gain, but that will bring up second and long. Brad Messon, senior from Madison, Wisconsin, with the stop from his free safety position. And you can see what Charlie Weiss is doing with this offense. They open up the game wide open, challenging these corners down the field. They challenged in the middle of the field with Samarja. Come back now, establish the run a little bit, hoping to get this Falcon defense on their heels. They're trying to keep them on their heels by going with the no huddle offense. It's exactly what they've done all game. And Quinn, perfect to start, six for six for 119 yards and two touchdowns. Play action. Quinn finally pressured and dropped. And he's brought down at the 25 yard line. John Rabel from his Falcon position came in on the blitz. Great pressure that time by John Raybould, and once again, the Falcons secondary did a nice job of coverage, and you can see Quinn as he play actions initially. There's plenty of time. A nice pocket, then late, John Raybould gets off the block and makes the sack of Brady Quinn. We've seen this offensive line of Notre Dame give up sacks. The last few weeks, they had went more to a three-step drop, hoping to get Brady Quinn time to get rid of the ball. Third and 19. Quinn to Samarja. Samarja can't slip the tackle, and Notre Dame will be forced to punt for the first time today. It's a nice stop again by that Falcon defense, Tom, keeping everything in front of them. That time, Raymond McKnight was lined up way on the outside and the left side. He just ran a go route, opening things up for Jeff Samarja. But the defensive backs come up, make a nice play, a very important stop after the first two drives of that Notre Dame offense. 
Chris Sutton set to return this Jeff Price kick. Price, the Ray guys, semifinalists. They come after it and don't get it. A low line drive, and Sutton left wide open. Slips one guy, can't get by the next. He's dropped at the 30 yard line. And there are some of those chances that they feel they have to take, but there's a flag on the play. As they came after the kicker, personal foul penalty. That will give Notre Dame a first down. It was fourth and 12. Man, Tom, I don't know. Hunter Altman came right up the middle. Obviously, there's contact there, but it looked to me like the punter's leg was high in the air. He comes low. The punter falls down. First and foul, roughing the kicker, number 32 on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Fisher to Barry is beside himself on the sideline. He may think that Air Force got a piece of that one, and he wants to talk it over with the officials, and they're having nothing to do with them. Air Force is the least penalized team in the Mountain West. Look at Jeff Price here as he punts. His right leg is in the air, and there's a little bit of contact with that left leg. But again, that's the 15-yard variety in the automatic first down for Notre Dame. Fisher DeBerry is on the field. He's at the 50-yard line. They're going to review this one to see if, indeed, that punt was blocked. It, all it takes is just a fingertip. And I don't know if it got the left forearm of Hunter Altman or not. It may have gotten him right on the sleeve. That's going to be pretty difficult for the replay booth to find some conclusive evidence whether or not he had actually tipped that ball. Fisher DeBerry talked to us about this series and how Air Force, for the most part, has been very unlucky over the last few years. He also talked about the fact that they really respected Notre Dame, but they certainly didn't fear Notre Dame. I mean, it was interesting as we spent time with the players and the coaching staff, you could just really sense a feeling of confidence about this team. And, tried to withstand those first early possessions of that Notre Dame offense had finally gotten a stop. The defense had played so well, forced a punting situation, and now we see if they actually did get a tip of this Jeff Price punt. The officials took it upon themselves to review this. It was not a challenge from Fisher to Barry. After review, the player did not touch the ball. Therefore, it is roughing an automatic first down. So Fisher DeBerry thought that Altman, and this might be your best look of all. Nope. A few inches to spare between the ball and the left forearm. Had Altman got a piece of it, would not have been roughing the punter, roughing the kicker, and it would have been Air Force football. Instead, new life for Notre Dame. First and 10 at the 47. On the ground, this is Walker, and he's got a first down carry, finally ridden down by Bobby Giannini. Notre Dame loves that little counter play where they get their guards and they pull their guards. Big Bob Morton again, number 76, he's your right guard, and they're simply going to pull to the left, and Darius Walker behind that big block of Bob Morton gets a terrific gain and a first down for Notre Dame. This drive continues for the Fighting Irish. Brings long pass to Samarja, was short of the first down on this drive. Now Walker another first down carry as Darius Walker takes it to the 24. I'd like to point out there a terrific block by Ryan Harris, their left tackle, big number 68, and we enjoyed talking to him this week. He's a senior on this team, and you know he talked to us about early on in his career and talked about, there he is, big fella right there, Ryan Harris, talked about the fact that they would listen to national commentators talk about how all the, how they were terrible in the class and how they couldn't play anybody and none of their starters would be able to start on other teams. And he said they really took it personally and are having an awful lot of fun now with Charlie Weiss as a head coach being 8-1. and one. In the air again, McKnight stays on his feet and scores. 
Raymond McKnight sheds a would-be tackler for Brady Quinn's third passing touchdown of this game. And right now, Tom, this Notre Dame offense able to do anything they want, lining up, running the counters, running right at this Air Force defense, and then all of a sudden you're going to have to get your safeties and your Falcons involved in the running game to get man-to-man -man on the outside, and Raymond McKnight with a touchdown. Now the all-time receptions leader in Notre Dame, passing Tom Gatewood, who caught passes from Joe Theismann. And with... And this extra point is blocked. Air Force gets their hands on. Chance to return it for two. Coming back the other way is Chris Sutton. Sutton on a dead sprint down the sideline. Cuts back, and that's where his run will end. The second blocked extra point of the season for Air Force. And while it sounds impressive, those are disappointing numbers for head coach Fisher to bury. Falcons pride themselves on special teams. Now they need the offense to get rolling. Take another look at Raymond McKnight, the senior from Inglewood, California. And Brady Quinn wanting to go to Raymond McKnight all day and looks to his left that time. He just beats Chris Sutton, who doesn't wrap up with the tackle. You see Raymond McKnight as he just simply turns around. It's a nice pass by Quinn and gets to the end zone for a touchdown. It wasn't just a surge up front, but a leap up front as well for Air Force to get the block, and it was big Robert Cray, the 6'8 left tackle, and the senior from Tucker, Georgia, who got his big mitts on it. Fisher to Barry since 1990, 94 block kicks. That's when they started keeping that stat, second only to Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech. Spencer Armstrong brings it out. Hit at the 20 and to the 22. Well, coming up tonight, our triple header rolls on down to Tennessee at 8 Eastern for a Conference USA matchup between UCF and Memphis. Then at 11.30 Eastern, tune in for Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois. Football is a way of life. Live it with CSTV. Here on the grounds of the Air Force Academy, Falcons being outgained 211 to 43. Notre Dame averaging 12 yards a play. And Trev, a couple of their shortest gains have been on their touchdowns. Carney will keep. Design quarterback draw brought down from behind. And a nice little look. Let's take a closer look at Sean Carney. Air Force junior quarterback completed global engagement and basic cadet training in the summer of 2005. His idol Vince Lombardi and his favorite TV shows, The Apprentice and 24. He grew up as an Irish Catholic Midwesterner in Ohio and was second team All-State, second to a guy by the name of Brady Quinn. Second and six to the air and a quick pass results in an Air Force first down. Anne Marie has more. Well, I was just listening to you talking about Sean Carney. Back here, I'm listening to him. He was walking down after that last series saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe to every single player on this team. You heard Fisher DeBerry say at the beginning, David and Goliath, I believe we can overcome. Sean Carney claims he still believes. And as the first quarter winds near a close, this likely the last play of the opening period. And Carney with the pitch. And another big hard hit at the end of that play. And that carry for Justin Hanley. And it was Mike Richardson with the stop. I think one of the more impressive things so far about these Notre Dame defenders, you're going to understand that at some point you have to come up and fill. And Mike Richardson has filled on the option all afternoon from Air Force. F-15E Eagles with the pregame flyby. Notre Dame on top of Air Force 20 to 3 as we start the second quarter. And Air Force keeps it on the ground. Carney now flush and he is dropped for a loss on what was second and six. And that will bring up third down for this Air Force offense. Take another look at Sean Carney. 
Sean Carney there, you just fake to the fullback, and again, that's the play they've kind of liked. It showed the fullback and then looked down the field. That time Notre Dame didn't bite on it, and he had to eat it. I think the defensive line, and there he is right there, big number 66, Derek Landry. These two defensive tackles, Derek Landry and Trevor Laws, controlling that interior of the Falcon offensive line. Landry 6'3", 283. Some immense size up there. Play clock rolling down. Carney does not get the play off, and this one will be stopped. And so a rare mistake made by the junior quarterback, Sean Carney, Offense, who's been five, starting since he was a freshman. The down remains third. So it stays third down, and now goes to third and long for Fisher to bury his Falcons. And they had led the nation in third long con third down conversions at 51 percent 0 for 2 today Tom the reason they've been 0 for 2 is simply because they've been in this situation right here it's been third and long that's not what this offense is built for it's built for third and shorts and so far Notre Dame's done a nice job of forcing third and longs with this Falcon offense third and 14 for Sean Carney and company Carney with the keeper Carney Runs over a man or two and takes it for a first down. That's one of the things that Fisher DeBerry told us yesterday. When they run a two-minute offense, when they need a big gain, a lot of times teams sit back expecting the pass. That opens up some seams. And you have to do what you do best, and that's exactly what they do best. That time, you see in the replay this time, here's Carney as he comes down the line. Notre Dame stops the fullback, and so Carney now is out on the perimeter. When you get to the perimeter, Tom Zivikowski, Maurice Crum, that's when you can make a play and a nice gain for that Falcon offense. And now a swing pass as they go to the air and a gain of three. We'll bring up about second and seven going to Moffitt that time. And so Sean Carney putting it in the air a few times. He is three of four today, 34 yards passing for Air Force. That catch by Mike Moffitt, his first career reception. So the little used wide receiver gets a catch. And Carney with the pitch this time. And that will bring up third and short. Third and short, Tom, and I think what Notre Dame's doing a nice job so far in this first half is mixing up who takes the fullback and mixing up the different raids for Sean Carney. Sometimes the defensive tackles are taking the fullback, then the defensive ends are crashing down from their five techniques and taking the fullback. So they're mix, you know, mixing up the looks for Sean Carney. Aflac is the proud sponsor of today's first and 10 line, and this is a third and two for Air Force. And they give it to the fullback, and that depending on the spot, will be good enough for a first down, looks like, from here. And Jacoby Kendrick with his first carry, senior from Midland, Texas. And these are, these are different fullbacks for Air Force than Notre Dame saw against Navy. These are guys who can break it, whether it's Kendrick or Williams. Jacoby Kendrick and Ryan Williams, both guys that can make people miss, not only physical runners, but guys can get to the outside. But we just saw right there, Tom, was that third and short. That's why they lead the nation in third down conversions. If they're third and short, third and three or four, if they're third and long, that's not what the offense is built for. Kendrick got his hands on that one, and the handoff almost went to Derek Landry, who ended up in the backfield in a hurry. Charlie Weiss this week singled him out to us when he talked about his defense. Obviously, Tom Zibikowski, Maurice Crum Jr., players like that get an awful lot of attention, but he really talked about Derek Landry and the one technique and how he gets in the backfield. As Tom Zibikowski shown there, 59 tackles. And he talked about playing this option offense and how you simply had to trust your instincts. See what you see and trust your instincts. And here comes the reverse off of the option. Looking for room and nothing there. A sea of white shirts. And that brings Victor Thompson to the turf. And that's a terrific play that time by Victor Abiyamiri at defensive end, staying home. How many times have we talked about playing disciplined defense? Here's your defensive end right there, Victor Abiyamiri. He sees action, action away, and rather than chasing, stays at home, gets up the field, ultimately doesn't bring down the ball carrier, but makes him cut back inside and waits for Maurice Crum Jr. to come make the play. There's Abby Amiri, leads team in tackles for losses and sacks. And they're going to go deep this time with Air Force. Incomplete. No flag. There it comes. The official closest to the play did not throw the flag, but the back judge did. And he threw it from about 35 yards away. 
That's Terrell Lambert out there with 31 tackles and really been the guy who's made a lot of big plays. Charlie Weiss not happy about the call. Number 20, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. You see Lambert that time reaching in. The question is, where is the left hand? Gets contact with the wide receiver, Mark Root. I think that's a good call. Charlie Weiss wasn't happy when that flag came out. And if you watch 60 Minutes, you know that he speaks and beeps a lot. First and 10 for Fisher to Barry's squad. A couple of big penalties have gone against Notre Dame on this current drive. 10 plays, 52 yards. Hall with the touch. No gain for Hall. And you see Chris Fromm getting off the turf to finish off that tackle. You look at this Notre Dame defense. You see how they just stand up. That's big Derek Landry again, number 66, just stands up Nicholas Charles and Stuart Perlow, the offensive lineman of Air Force. And when you can stand them up at the line of scrimmage and push them back two yards, obviously that helps your defense to make the play. Back. A late pitch to Hall. He cuts it back. He is just shy of the first down marker. See, Tom, you have a choice defensively how you're going to defend the option. If you want to allow the fullback to have a big day, that's fine. If you don't want to let Sean Carney get to the perimeter, Notre Dame in this game has said, we're not going to let Jacoby Kendrick or Ryan Williams at fullback beat us. We're going to make Air Force get to the outside. See that? They take the fullback, so then Carney has to pitch it outside to Chad Hall. They're saying, we'll take some chances with Mike Richardson and Terrell Lambert at corner coming up and making the play. Third and short. Carney keeps it, and he's got the first down just outside of the 15-yard line. Now, one thing about Sean Carney at 5'10", 190, is he never seems to take a direct hit. He doesn't take hits because he told us he learned his lesson about taking big hits back as a freshman playing against the University of Cal, and he thought he was in the open field, and here was a safety. Thought he'd put his head down and get some extra yards, and he said, man, I don't think I've ever been hit like that, and I learned I get down. I do not take big hits anymore. When Carney was in high school, he pushed a guy by the name of Troy Smith to a different position. He started in front of the Ohio State quarterback. Moved Smith to wide receiver before he then transferred. Carney flushed off his back foot, incomplete. Flag on the play. You're going to get a hold on that offensive line of Air Force, and sometimes that's what happens when you play action and it's a quick step back for your quarterback. The offensive line thinks they only have to block for a second or two, but then Carney, who felt pressure, tried to roll to his right, and he get the hold on the offensive line. Holding, offense, number 57, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. This is the much maligned left guard position. Now the freshman, Nicholas Charles. And there's big Nicholas Charles right there. And again, he shows some action to the fullback, and he goes back to the right. And again, guess who he's working on? 66, Derek Landry. They have not been able to handle either in running situations or passing situations the play of Derek Landry. First and 20 now, Carney gives it to Hall, and Hall is brought down by Derek Landry. For more on that left guard position, let's check in with Anne Marie. Well, Nick Charles is starting on that line as a true freshman as a result of the worst week Fisher DeBerry said he has had as a coach in 43 years. He lost three offensive linemen in three and five days. Tyler DeHarlow, the starting guard, went down in a game with a knee injury. So Caleb Morris filled in for the rest of the game, but had been having some shin problems. He had an x-ray on Monday. It was broken. The guy that gave the starting position to on Wednesday broke his leg in practice. So Nick Charles in there as a freshman starting. Thank you, Anne-Marie. And on the fake toss, Carney wants to throw. Instead, he'll run it and get a couple of yards. That will bring up third and long once again. It is very tough in any offense, let alone this triple option offense, to have continuity when you're trying to break in freshmen on the offensive line. And, and Nick Charles is going to be a terrific offensive lineman for this Falcon offense. Fisher DeBerry told us about that. But not only is he a freshman trying to play in a game like this, but you're playing against Derek Landry and Trevor Laws, two terrific defensive tackles. Third and 14, 15th play of this drive. They've taken more than eight minutes off the clock. Air Force would love to shorten this game. 
Kobe Kendrick, the fullback. Carney pitches to Hall. Hall stopped after a four-yard gain, and that will bring up fourth down. One of the components of a successful option team is you have to have wide receivers and slot players who are not only willing to block, but good blockers. And so far in this game, Mike Richardson's done a great job at corner. Look at number 30 right here. Comes right up and makes a great tackle on Chad Hall. Another field goal attempt for Zach Sasser. This will be his second 32-yarder of the game. Should he split the upright? And this one is blocked by Notre Dame. The Irish get one. And here comes Notre Dame the opposite way. Terrell Lambert had the score against Michigan State for the win. And now he'll race down the sideline. Notre Dame turns a blocked field goal into six the other way. Seventy six yard sprint for Terrell Lambert. These are the kind of plays that Air Force simply could not afford. Once again, Derek Landry, Trevor Laws, big number 98, gets his hand up. And look at Terrell Lambert as he scoops the ball up, gets down to the sideline and into the end zone. And Duke Wade leads him down. And now the opportunity to go up 27 to 3 here as we get to the midpoint of the second quarter. Joya puts it through. Notre Dame extends its lead on Air Force with a special teams play. And welcome back to CSTV's Football Nation. The fans here in Colorado Springs celebrating in full force with Johnson Bill Bratz, the taste of tailgating. That's a great sponsorship. Even the cadets get free brats out of the deal. I think they can't complain. A lot of push-ups for Notre Dame this afternoon. Already 27 points on the board. The offense in full tilt and special teams getting a 76-yard return midway through the second quarter. It's a 24-point Irish advantage. Burkhardt puts it in the air. From the end zone, Spencer Armstrong wants to bring it out, and he is dropped. Special teams, a story in the second quarter. Terrell Lambert finds the football after the Trevor Laws block and takes it 76 yards. Fisher to Barry on the sideline. Trying to tell his offense they need a touchdown on this possession. Sean Carney pitches it to Hall. Hall is brought down immediately. John Ryan, the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, brings him down. And look at the Air Force offense, what they've done this afternoon. Not bad. They're averaging almost four and a half yards of play, but Notre Dame is averaging nearly 12 yards of play. Yeah, you look at the score, it's 27 to 3, and you say, how could Air Force be content with 4.4 yards per play? Well, you know, if you talk to Fisher to Barry, that's what they're attempting to do. Get three and four yards every carry, control the clock, control the time of possession. They just haven't been able to stop the passing game of Brady Quinn. And now Carney to the air, and that pass complete as he finds Victor Thompson for a first down. And the passing game is going to be open all day for this Falcon offense because Notre Dame has chosen to come out, simply go man on the outside, get safeties around the line of scrimmage. And as Sean Carney rolls left, sets his feet and drills it into Victor Thompson, who had 12 catches and two touchdowns coming into this game. And Carney, four of five in the air today. On the option, he'll cut it back. Nice little play for Sean Carney. And it turns into a four and a half yard gain. And that's what Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator, told us was, you know, it's fine if those linebackers make the play. Joe Brockington that time came up and make the play, but that's a four or five yard gain. We'll take that every time. Well, today's Aflac trivia question. What former Air Force player has won the most Super Bowls? We saw Charlie Weiss's Super Bowl ring this week up in South Bend. And this former Falcon has a few of his own. Straight up the middle that time. The fullback Ryan Williams, who had two scores against Tennessee in that near win at Neyland Stadium. Twenty-seven three, Notre Dame in front of Air Force. As the fullback Ryan Williams gets a first down carry. A 
Back into the fullback. Williams again. And he takes it to the 40. I think sort of the chess match that's going to go on between Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator of Air Force, and Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame, is just trying to figure out exactly who has the responsibility of the pitch. There have been numerous occasions with a defensive lineman, sometimes a defensive end, sometimes the linebackers, figuring out who has which responsibility, and then you call which option play. Trevor Laws shaking up on the play. Big left tackle at 6'1", 294. He and Derek Landry have been blowing up plays left and right this afternoon for Notre Dame. Talking to Chuck Peterson, he said, you know, against Navy, this Notre Dame front slanted towards the field every play, and Navy really didn't react early enough, and so they thought they had something for those guys as they slanted every play. And so far in this game, They've had some slanting, but they've also just stood there and taken on the blocks. And you see him right there just dives underneath that block, and Trevor Laws gets caught up in the traffic. It leaves second and six for Sean Carney and the Air Force Falcons. Ryan Williams is fullback right behind him. Williams. No, Carney on the option. And that's the first touch for Chad Smith. And Smith surrounded after a gain of a few. Tom Zibikowski is slow to get up. Tom Zibikowski had a great game against Navy, almost 14 tackles. He's the alley player. That time, Sean Carney, he's pitching off of Zibikowski. Zibikowski comes up, makes him pitch the ball, gives it to Chad Hall. But once again, these corners stepping up and making the plays. Aflac is the proud sponsor of the first to 10 line for today's game. This is a third and three for Air Force. Carney. Gives it off to Hall, and he is on the logo, and that's good enough for a first down. And that shows you, Trev, the many different options that they have in this offense. Chad Hall, the wing back that time, gets an inside carry. And you show action of a simple drop back pass. You have the offensive line open it up, and you go back, simply hand it inside to Chad Hall. It's a nice little hold, and when you're 5'8 and 180 pounds, it doesn't take a lot. This is the kind of drive that Air Force likes, that three and four yards, 10 carries for 31 yards for Chad Hall. On the pitch, they want to throw it. Here's some trickery into the air and incomplete. Mark Root almost made a circus catch on the toss from Justin Hanley, who was a quarterback in high school at Dunwoody High School in suburban Atlanta. And that's how you keep those safeties and corners back. You just put the little pitch out that time to Hanley, and he pulls up and throws. And look at the almost circus one-handed catch by Mark Root. Goes up against Terrell Lambert and almost brings that thing down. So they take chances of first down. It leaves second and 10. And Carney will throw it himself this time. And that one's dropped. Right in the numbers of Chad Hall. Now let's go to the Fieldhouse in New York for an update. All right, thanks, Tom. Adam Zucker here. Already had one big upset in the SEC with Auburn going down. We could have another. The Gators have tied South Carolina after falling behind 7-0. They are at the half. Meanwhile, Nebraska trying to clinch the Big 12 North. They lead Texas A&M. Plenty more coming up at halftime, guys. All right, thanks, Adam. No one in this booth interested in those Nebraska scores, by the way. Here's the numbers for Carney. Four for five in the air. Six carries for 27 yards. And he'll put it in the air again. Nope, there's a flag in the play. This one likely coming back on a holding call. Carney still scrambles for eight. See, that's one of the plays and the problems you have with your offensive line. You know, they want to take some chances. They want to throw the ball. They want to challenge this Irish secondary. When you have an offensive line that spent the entire During year. The play, holding. Offense. Number 62. Ten yards. Previous spot. We spent third down. The entire year run blocking. Suddenly you come out and you try to throw the football, the offensive line, trying to handle those very active defensive linemen, Derek Landry, Trevor Laws, Victor Abiyamiri, and suddenly you have some penalties, four penalties already today for that Falcon offense. And for a team that is averaging only three penalties a game. On this current drive, nine plays, 37 yards, clock ticking nearing the four-minute mark. And there is some chatter going on on the Air Force sideline right now. 
the play clock will run down and they're going to use a timeout with one second left on the play clock. So we'll step away for a timeout ourselves with Notre Dame on top of Air Force 27 to 3 and a big third down upcoming for Fisher to Barry and company. 27 3 Notre Dame out in front of Air Force with less than three minutes to go before halftime. And stay tuned for CSTV Football Nation Halftime Show presented by Nissan with Adam Zucker and Scott Zolak back in the field house. We'll have scores and highlights from around the nation, including some of those big SEC games today. First half stats and highlights from here in Colorado Springs. Air Force, four of seven on third down conversions this afternoon. That stat a tad misleading. Notre Dame has already put 27 points on the board. Carney, flushed. Runs into his own man, still scrambling, and Sean Carney will go down, flag on the play at the 35. Sean Carney trying to make a lot happen today for Air Force, and Trev, we've seen numerous times as we get the call with coverage downfield, he's just running for During his the play, life. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number 75, defense, 15 yards, automatic first out. Hey, Trev, the question for you, can a guy like Sean Carney try to do too much in a game like this? Well, I think you take your quarterback, you put the ball in his hands, he's got an awful lot of confidence, but I think you also have to look at Notre Dame's defense and where they're strong. I mean, they're strong up front. They're a secondary that's 55th in the country in pass defense with almost 200 yards a game allowed, so you're trying to attack their weakness. Chris Farram attacked the face mask of Sean Carney. They called it a 15-yarder. And on the first down carry, nothing doing for Air Force. And there's Justin Brown, big number 94, and that's sort of the point. You get two yards, a yard and a half on first down. Now Air Force with a little sense of urgency as we get towards the end of the second quarter, trying to run the ball right at this Notre Dame defense. Second down pass to the near side. That's Root, and Root steps out of bounds. It's a unique two-minute offense for the Air Force Falcons. They can surprise you with the run at any time, but they don't go away from their bread and butter. Well, that's what they do. That's their personality. It's what they are as an offense. And I don't think they've really went outside of what they do for an offense. I mean, I think you got that front four who's gotten consistent pressure on Sean Carney all afternoon. He's found himself having to scramble. Then you have an offensive line who's hanging on to blocks, and you've had holding calls against the front four of Notre Dame. 11 plays for 56 yards on this drive for Air Force. Fisher DeBerry told his team they needed a touchdown here. Carney pitches to Hall. Hall trying to find the corner, and he is brought down after a couple of yards by Ndukwe. And Duque comes all the way across from the left side of the field that time, becomes the alley player. They do a nice job on the fullback. Carney gets to the outside, but in Duque with his speed, gets to the outside and makes the play. So now second and four to the fullback, Williams, and that thing is bottled up. Air Force using just about everybody, as is their offensive personality in this triple option. Rushes by position. Carney has kept it a half dozen times. A fullback eight touches. The halfback 14 and one by the wide receiver. That way you can see what Notre Dame's trying to do. They're trying to force Air Force to the perimeter and taking the matchups of their corners versus Chad Hall out in space. And Carney brought down by Derek Landry. The penetration at the point of attack by Derek Landry has been consistent throughout this first half in the backfield before Sean Carney even had a chance to make a decision about pitching the ball. Air Force uses the timeout here. Not only before he can make a decision on pitching, but almost before he can decide if he's going to give it to the fullback. A slants to the inside that time, and Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator, talked to us about that, how that defensive line loves to slant, and it was imperative for his offensive line to do a good job of, of getting in front and sealing off those guys, and he thought that the fullback would be very important if Notre Dame continued to slant. Take a look now at our Xbox Live. Big play replay. The big guys up front get a block on this field goal. Trevor Laws block it. Terrell Lambert returned it. 76 yards, and it wasn't necessarily a momentum changer, but obviously Air Force was about to put another score on the board. In this second quarter, Notre Dame offensively has yet to touch the ball. Air Force has run 30 plays here in the second, and they're about to run out the second. And Brady Quinn is still 8 of 8 
has not thrown an incomplete pass the entire first quarter hasn't had an opportunity here in the second half but the game was really decided at least the reason it's 27 to 3 the first two series of Notre Dame no huddle suddenly it's 14 to nothing and changed the entire complexion of what Air Force wanted to do fourth and two Air Force will go for it. Carney keeps it Carney is short likely they will spot him just a half yard short and Notre Dame will get its first offensive play of the second quarter. Maurice Crum Jr. the linebacker 71 tackles on the season does a nice job of staying at home. Carney wants to roll out and come up the middle of the field but Crum is standing waiting and makes the play. They're going to measure it. It'll likely be about a foot short. You know, you mentioned Brady Quinn not getting any opportunities here in the second quarter. Here's a guy who is a legitimate Heisman contender. He started off strong with the two touchdown passes, but he's had very few plays to impress anybody today. Well, he's been awfully impressive. The few plays he has been in there, very accurate. And Air Force have tried a lot of different things. They've tried zone. They've applied man. They've tried to bring some pressure. And Quinn has just sat back there like a surgeon, as he said he loves to do, and found the open receiver every time. He's a guy who not only was a beneficiary of Charlie Weiss's confidence, but also the expertise that Weiss brought him. Brady Quinn, the Notre Dame quarterback, tutored in the offseason by some great NFL quarterbacks also. Jeff Samarja just gets behind that secondary of Air Force, and here you see Brady Quinn as he just his patience gets to the outside and finds his tight end and then goes back to Raymond McKnight on the outside who breaks the tackle of Nathan Smith and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Charlie Weiss in the offseason brought forth tape for Brady Quinn to watch of the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. And he opened up his Rolodex and Brady Quinn gets phone calls from guys like Brett Favre and Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and it certainly makes your job a whole lot easier when you get to hear from those guys. You know credibility. I mean Charlie Weiss as a head coach has credibility and so when he came to Notre Dame he brought that credibility and said hey look you know what I have access. You want to talk to some of the all time great quarterbacks. They'll tell you how to handle certain situations and Brady Quinn told us that certainly helped him as he seeks to manage this offense. They are reviewing this play checking the spot of the ball. It looked like on that play that he should have been at the 23 the ball when the knee goes down the, when the ball goes down. Take another look. Maybe the 21 and a half yard line. Just to go back to Brady Quinn you know he said that we talked to coach Weiss about his development he said he really earned my confidence that first spring. I mean he was a sponge. He listened to everything I told him. He said I brought him four years of tapes of Tom Brady and I told our whole offense as we watched the tapes I said envision yourself. I mean Ryan Harris you're the left tackle. OK you're the left tackle. That's you right there. Envision yourself in this offense because these are the plays. I mean Jeff Samarja here you are on the outside. This is your play. And all of those guys took those DVDs home. They saw that offense. They had after review video confirms the spot was a good spot short of the first down. Notre Dame's ball first down. <laughs> it was a good spot and it's a first down for Notre Dame. First time for everything, right? I hadn't heard that one explained before. Quinn under center. Darius Walker is running back. And play action. They want to put it in the air to close this first half on a bang. And a leaping grab made for a Notre Dame first down. Oh, incomplete. Excuse me. David Grimes couldn't pull it in. I think the difference between these two teams look at Brady Quinn as he sits there there isn't anybody within five yards of Brady Quinn and that's his first incompletion of the day and that was a nicely thrown ball and David Grimes simply can't come up with a catch a minute two left in this first half after the incompletion they want to throw again they'll dump off the line and he can't handle it it's okay now Brady Quinn is eight of ten and both of those could be considered drops both of the passes hit the hands 
That time Darius Walker who's really hurt a lot of defenses not only running the ball but look at the time as Brady Quinn just sits surveys the field looks for an open receiver has Darius Walker wide open John Rabel number nine comes up ultimately there but would have been a nice gain for Darius Walker the single season record holder at Notre Dame with 47 catches coming into today. They've thrown it on bo both first and second down and out of the I formation as Ashley McConnell sees the field at fullback. They're going to throw it again. And over the middle, Walker does haul this one in with one hand. Springs free, but short of the first down will bring up fourth and two. I think Darius Walker likes to have to make it a difficult catch as Charlie Weiss looks on. And Another one was just too easy. It's just too easy. Don't throw it right at my hands. And that time, Brady Quinn, again, Notre uh, Air Force trying to keep everything in front of him, allows a little dump off to Darius Walker, breaks the tackle of Julian Madrid and gets a nice gain. Now fourth down. And Charlie Weiss, you know, he loves to go for it on fourth down. We've only seen two punts in this first half for either team. And with 16 seconds and rolling, now 10 seconds left in the half, and Notre Dame will stop the clock. Brady Quinn wondering just why that clock was running. Charlie Weiss wondering the same thing. Notre Dame takes a timeout. I'm not sure Charlie Weiss was happy with spotting the ball and getting the play ready to run. But with the new clock rules, the seconds tick off. And they have 10 seconds left now. But you have that, that may have cost them a quick out, maybe to set up a play 10, 15 yards further down the field. Well, I think that Charlie Weiss simply wanted to run the play clock out. He wanted the first half to be over. Now he finds himself fourth down. You're either going to go for it. You got 10 seconds left, or you're going to have to punt. He was not a, he was not happy with Brady Quinn, and Brady Quinn's walking off the field, pointing to the referee, saying, "Well, he made me do it." <laughs> and let's revisit our Aflac trivia question for the day: Which former Air Force player is one? The most Super Bowls in the answer. You knew this one right off the top of your head, Trev. I mean, answer, Tom. It's Chad Headings, defensive alignment here from 1984 to 87, won three Super Bowls with the Cowboys after serving in the Air Force for five seasons as a fighter pilot. And Fisher to Barry just beamed with pride when we asked him about heading yesterday going into the College Football Hall of Fame this year. Chris Sutton on the return as the first half comes to a close and Sutton takes it to the 36 yard line. All in all the Notre Dame offense going full bore here in the first half and Air Force controlling the clock but not able to get on the board aside from a field goal. Brady Quinn and company got off to a very quick start running this offense of head coach Charlie Weiss. And they open up a convincing first half lead. And I really thought, Tom, it was the start of the game. The way they came out, the two-minute offense, the sense of urgency running right down the field really never allowed Air Force to make an adjustment. Samarja two times getting behind the secondary of Air Force. Suddenly it's 14 to nothing. It changed the complexion of the game entirely in terms of what Air Force wanted to do. They tried to come out and throw a little bit, but so far Notre Dame's defense played so well in that first half. And now let's go down to Anne Marie Anderson standing by with Charlie Weiss. Coach Weiss, you have a significant lead at halftime, but you're known for being a perfectionist. What are you going to ask your team to focus on in the second half? Well, how about not having those penalties in the last five minutes of the, of the second quarter? And you know, we had a chance to pin them, pin them back, and then, you know, th then we get we get a penalty right there in the last couple drives. I mean, obviously there was a lot of good things that happened right there, but penalties are just a, a, not very disciplined. What do you do to keep your team focused in that second half? Oh, I don't think you're going to have to worry about that too much. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, Anne Marie. The focus will come in that halftime chat. Now, let's go to Adam Zucker and Scott Zolak at the Fieldhouse in New York for CSTV Football Nation Halftime Show presented by Nissan.
All right, thanks a lot, Tom. So Charlie Weiss with the uh, the, the fadeaway comment there. I've been in some of those half times. <laughs> he, he's not lying. <laughs> yeah, 27-3 at the half. Amazing, Brady Quinn actually ended up throwing an, inter an incompletion. Yeah, he was 8-8 eight eight at one point, but, you know, three touchdowns right now, very effective. But the key to this game is the way Notre Dame started it, not only to set up the play action, but to go up top early in the football game. They did what they had to do. They had to make the plays. Take a look at the Air Force corner. Looking in the whole way at the run, Great play action fake by Quinn. What they have is a max protection. Samar just slips inside, gets past the safety, and that's just an easy throw. I mean, DeBerry gave him the ball, thought they had an advantage to put Notre Dame, go up against the win, but it backfired against them, and they found themselves down 7-zip. And so Quinn with three touchdown passes. Notre Dame up 27-3. to 28 on the year. Yeah. Good track now for the Heisman. Yeah, he is uh, definitely a front runner at the moment. Of the eight teams ahead of Notre Dame in the BCS standings entering the week, Two have already lost. Louisville on Thursday night and today, fifth-ranked Auburn getting blown out at home by Georgia. Might have expected a low-scoring game. Uh-uh, Brandon Cox was making it happen for the dogs because he got intercepted four times, Scott. Yeah, he was the dog today, and we're going to get into this in a little bit. Georgia taking down Auburn at Auburn, 37 to 15. Also in the SEC, Steve Spurrier back in the swamp to try to run the ruin the Gators' title hopes. 30 seconds to play in the first. Mike Davis busting into the end zone for the Gamecocks. They're on top, 7-0. South Carolina's never won in the swamp, but Chris Leak finding Dallas Baker, and so they are tied in the early goings of the third quarter. And later tonight, it is Arkansas against Tennessee in the SEC. If Tennessee wins that game and South Carolina wins that game, just if, could if, be a if. crazy day. If, if, if. But the big one laid today by Auburn, and you got to ask yourselves this. If you're an Auburn fan and you back Tommy Tuberville, how can you not record, recruit good quarterback play to go to the University of Auburn? Brandon Cox, awful today at home. 4-12, four interceptions. He threw as many interceptions as he did completions. You get outplayed by a freshman and Matthew Stafford, who was 14-20 to for 2-12 and a touchdown. Yes. Pathetic for Auburn today. Yeah, and Georgia really emerging after a team that lost to Kentucky. Didn't seem like they had much left in them. But there is so much to talk about in the SEC. And coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern, we will talk about it on SEC Football Nation on CSTV with your host Greg Amsinger along with former Kentucky great Tim Couch and our college football insider Brian Curtis talking about South Carolina, Florida, plus the balls and the Razorbacks. All right. And as we continue here on the CSTV Football Nation Halftime Show presented by Nissan, we will dive into a crazy ACC where the standings seem to have flipped versus last year. Georgia Tech, the team in first place, trying to clinch a spot in the championship game. CSTV salutes the men and women of our armed forces. And welcome back. A tumultuous season for Miami turned tragic Tuesday night when senior defensive lineman Brian Pata was shot and killed outside his apartment. Larry Coker said his team wanted to play today at Maryland in order to honor Pata. And the Canes trying to play spoiler at this point in the season. And right now it is a close one in the third quarter. Maryland on top 14-10. However, potential tragic moment now for the Terrapins. Donnie Woods, offensive lineman, carried off the field after sustaining a neck injury and airlifted to a shock trauma facility in Baltimore. We'll have more on his condition as the day progresses. Also in the ACC, Georgia Tech securing a spot in the conference title game against North Carolina. Tashard Choice, 119 yards on the day, and that's his touchdown, the only touchdown of the whole game. Late in the second, UNC looking for the tie, but Joe Daly, one of his two interceptions as he is picked off by Kenny Scott. Georgia Tech wins this one 7-0. Virginia Tech home against Kent State today up on top of the Golden Flashes 13 nothing Brandon Orr with a six yard touchdown run there Pac-10 Cal trying to stay perfect in conference play on top of Arizona 17 to 3 Deshaun Jackson with a long touchdown Nate Longshore with a touchdown pass there Big 12 Nebraska Texas A&M the Cornhuskers trying to clinch the Big 12 North title and a berth in the conference championship game with a win they lead the Aggies 21 to 10 Zach Taylor 10 of 15 with a touchdown and in the Big East West Virginia bouncing back from the Louisville loss Mountaineers over the Bearcats 42 to 24 Steve Slayton 12 carries buck 48 and two touchdowns and from the Big 10 Wisconsin winning without John Stocko out with a shoulder injury 
beating Iowa 24-21 as the Hawkeyes slip to 6-5. and P.J. Hill with 77 yards on the ground. But back to Maryland, Scott. Of course, we wait to hear on how that lineman is doing, but this is a Terrapins team that, along with Wake Forest, is thinking conference championship Yeah, you go back right to now. the start of the year. They played FIU, a team they beat 14-10, to a team that hasn't won any games yet this year. And here, Maryland, all of a sudden, starting to make some plays. Sam Hollenbach, two big plays early in this Miami game to Hayward Bay, a 65-yard touchdown and a 96-yard touchdown. And here's the thing. Maryland controls their own destiny. They still have to play Boston College. They've got Wake Forest, and if they get past that, they may be playing for the ACC. They will be playing for the ACC championship in the BCS Bowl berth. Yeah, Georgia know, Tech's got it easy. They're an easy part of the division. Yeah, Georgia Tech's already taken the Coastal, so lots to be decided in the Atlantic. We're also going to check on Ohio State and Michigan, both trying to stay perfect until they meet next week when the CSTV Football Nation Halftime Show, presented by Nissan, continues. CSTV salutes the men and women of our armed forces. We're back. Ohio State not keeping things as close as they did last week against Illinois. Up on Northwestern, 33-10. to Troy Smith with three touchdown passes in the game so far. And Michigan up big on Indiana on the road, 34-3, to pending an extra point. They just scored a touchdown as they are dominating there. Chad Henney with two touchdown passes. Mike Hart has also plunged in as we await their meeting finally coming up next week. Of course, coming up in just a couple of minutes here, the second half between Notre Dame and Air Force. And Charlie Weiss on his way to the locker yeah. room said, hey, it won't be a problem keeping these guys focused. He seemed a little angry up 27-3. Well, that's the big thing about Charlie Weiss. He wants to get in there and get with teams and being on Charlie Weiss teams in the past. He really hits home at halftime. He makes those adjustments. That's what separates him from other coaches at the collegiate level. This guy's been there. He's done it in the pros. And, uh, He's a little ticked off. I mean, just, just to say that they're going to go out and play the second half, this thing could get ugly for uh, Air Force. Yeah, even up 27-3, he seemed like he was going for more in the first half there. He feels it probably should be about 45-3 to at this point. All right. So, no, no imperfection yeah. is good for Charlie Weiss. Brady Quinn, those, those two incompletions he wants at votes. the end of he the half. He wants votes. <laughs> well, he is in a, a bit of a swing state. That'll do it here on the CSTV Football Nation Halftime Show presented by Nissan. See you after the game. CSTV Football Nation Notre Dame versus Air Force is being brought to you by Johnsonville Brats. Welcome to heaven on a bun. Welcome to Johnsonville. And by Nissan, proud presenter of the 2006 Heisman. Visit theheismanvote.com to cast your vote. And on this beautiful Saturday afternoon, November 11th, we honor Veterans Day. Notre Dame in front of Air Force 27 to 3 at intermission. Alongside Trev Alberts, I'm Tom Hart. And uh, Trev, what we saw in the first half was a Notre Dame defense that had been very, very much criticized over the last month, month and a half. But they came up big, especially that line. And Coach Weiss talked all week about being more consistent, more consistent on offense and defense. But Derek Landry and Trevor Laws, I thought the two interior guys stepped up and did a nice job. And they've mixed up who takes the fullback. You get the defensive ends involved, the linebackers involved. So defensively, I think they've done a pretty good job of shutting down that Air Force run. And Brady Quinn did a pretty good job of getting off to a quick start as Notre Dame took the opening kickoff and he took to the air. Jeff Samarja two times early got behind that Falcon secondary. That changed the complexion. And here Carlson had tied in with a nice touchdown. And then again, Trevor Laws, those two interior guys get the block field goal. Terrell Lambert picks it up and takes it in for six. We haven't had an opportunity to see much of Brady Quinn in this offense because of the way this game has transpired. Take a look now at the Nissan shift performance and what needs to happen here in the second half. Well, I think Sean Carner, you see the numbers there, 27 rush yards. He does have 59 passing yards, but they've just been dominated at the line of scrimmage. And so I think he has to do a little bit better job. He's 5 of 7 passing. The offensive line has to give him a little bit more time. See if they can do that as the Irish take the field for the second half. And we return for second half action from Colorado Springs right after this. Number nine, Notre Dame leading Air Force 27 to three. A moment ago, our Anne Marie Anderson caught up with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Coach, what did you say to your team at halftime? Well, it's not over with, I guarantee. I believe in miracles. Rutgers certainly performed a miracle the other night. This football team is very capable of playing a lot better football than we're playing right now. We're sitting back on our heels. We're not tackling very well. We don't finish drives. This is a very important drive to start this second half with. Thank you, coach. 
you know, Trev, it was also an important drive when he said we needed a touchdown on the drive that stalled a field goal attempt, ended up going 76 yards the other way. They had a couple drives. They did convert one field goal, and you mentioned that last drive when they had a nice drive or trying to get three more points, and Trevor Law blocks the field goal attempt. It turns into six when Terrell Lambert takes it back for the touchdown. But Coach DeBerry is right. I mean, this is a very important series here. You know, offensively, they've averaged 4.3 yards per play in the first half. They just haven't finished drives and gotten touchdowns. Against any other opponent, 4.3 yards per carry per play is absolutely fantastic. With the win, this kick soars out of the end zone. Take a look at what this ground attack for Air Force has done this afternoon. And primarily the fullback carrying 19 rushes right up the middle for 71 yards. So far, 31 carries for 107 yards. And Sean Carney was 5 of 7, had 59 yards passing. They had 39 plays in the first half. And you see the distribution right there of where they're trying to attack this Irish defense, and I think that defense with those front two, Derek Landry and Trevor Laws, has held up pretty well. Carney will keep it. It gets hit after a gain of about four, and this is what Notre Dame has done this afternoon against this Air Force offense. And they've done it up front. They've done it up front, and there's big number 66, Derek Landry, getting in the backfield. I thought the corners played well. Mike Richardson that time comes up and fills, and again, makes a nice play on Chad Hall. They have bottled up the fullback. That was Ryan Williams on the carry. And now, Air Force facing a second and six. Carney has Hall, fakes the pitch, keeps it himself, and that will bring up third and one, which is what Air Force wants. We talked about that in the first half. But when the other team has put up 27 points, you got to score in a hurry. And I thought that 14-play explosion from the Irish offense in the first quarter really just changed everything, took the momentum out of this crowd. Suddenly you're down 14 nothing, and you had to do some things differently than you really wanted to do. I think they come out, do what they do, just run the option, get away from the passing a little bit, and try to get a drive here early in the third quarter. Carney this time does pitch it to Chad Hall. He's got the first down up to the 34-yard line. And the minute you relax on defense playing against the option, that's when the big play happens. That time Sean Carney goes down the line of scrimmage. Both safeties come up, and Zibikowski forces the pitch, and then Dukeway comes up and finally makes a tackle on Chad Hall. Shinadum and Dukeway has been very, very busy in the defensive backfield. Aflac is the proud sponsor of the first and ten line for today's game. As Air Force moves the chains for the first time, now Carney drops, pressure on. Carney gets a nice block from the offensive line and can scramble and cuts it up, and he's to the 41-yard line, making something out of nothing on a six-and-a-half-yard game. And that's what Sean Carney brings to this offense, but that's exactly what's happened the entire first half. They fake that little handoff to the fullback. He takes the street three steps back, wants to get rid of the football, but there's initial pressure. Again, Derek Landry, 66 pressure, and Sean Carney has to get what he can, although he gets six yards there on first down. Second and a long three. Paul on the misdirection and doesn't fool anybody. Pat Kuntz there to bring him down on that defensive front playing in front of Derek Landry here in the second half. And Joe Brockington, the senior from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. Career high seven tackles for Brockington and that come from behind win against UCLA. 219 yards for Notre Dame, Air Force at 184. Carney, time, one-on-one -on -one coverage and overshoots Victor Thompson again. That's what Notre Dame defensively has done with Rick Minner. They feel like their corners matched up man-to-man -man on the wide receivers, Victor Thompson or slot backs, and Terrell Lambert that time just step with step with Victor Thompson. And Air Force here, important drive, forced to punt here early in the third quarter. First punt today for Zach Sasser went 34 yards. It was on the first possession for Air Force and not a good one. Gets into this one. A low end over end kick that takes a Falcon bounce and will carry down to the 13 yard line. So we step away for a break. It's 27 3, Notre Dame. 
man with the rampart range in the background at the uh, foot of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado Springs Notre Dame leads Air Force 27 to 3 with 11.54 to go in the third quarter and we get to see this Notre Dame offense we've heard so much about but haven't seen much of today outside the first quarter. Quinn gives to Walker and Walker has room past the 20 to the 22. Brady Quinn so far this afternoon was very busy in the first quarter rested for most of the second. You look at his passing chart he's found success just about everywhere he's looked. And Tom right there the two big plays 25 plus that's exactly what Richard Bell the defensive coordinator at Air Force told us they could not allow and that was early in the game that sort of you know sort of set the tone offensively for Notre Dame those two Two incompletions were catchable balls for Brady Quinn. Fifth catch for Samarja, who takes that one for a four yard gain, and he's right at the 100 yard mark for the afternoon. So difficult, these corners. Garrett Reebok, number 39, such a cushion on the outside that time for Jeff Samarja. Charlie Weiss, you say, look, if they're going to give us 10 yards of a cushion, we're just going to throw the easiest pass in college football. We'll ask our Heisman Trophy candidate, Samarja will simply turn around, and because he's 6'5, 220 pounds, it's an easy gain in the first down for the Irish. Winston drives in motion. Darius Walker right up the gut for another Notre Dame first down. Bobby Giannini makes the tackle. 18 yards later. The offense puts so much pressure on you, Tom, with all the different looks that they give you. The quick passes to the outside, the offensive line. You come back with Grimes in motion, and look at the hole that time for Darius Walker, who squirts through it for another first down. Good blocking up front by John Sullivan and Dan Santucci. The left guard open up that big hole for Darius Walker. 22nd straight start for Santucci at left guard today. This is Grimes getting a block on the perimeter from McKnight, and he takes it to midfield. Second and three forthcoming. It's interesting, these wide receivers, Rayma McKnight and Jeff Samarja, both breaking records for the Irish. I found it interesting, you know, neither of them were top 100 recruits coming out of high school. I mean, they were well thought of wide receivers, but they were not the cream of the crop, and yet they've come here to Notre Dame and made a tremendous impact. 100 yards receiving today for Samarja. That's his ninth career receiving game. And this fourth one this season. Such a difficult matchup for those young corners in the Falcons. And so they go right back to Darius Walker, and he takes it to the 36-yard line. And the Air Force defenders slow to get up off the turf, even though they rested for most of the second quarter. In the first half, this Irish offense averaged 10 yards per play, and literally they can do anything they want against this Falcon defense. And it was a defense that really had improved over last year. I mean, they were giving up 105 less yards per game than they did in 05 and almost 11 points less. So they have improved, but here today, this offense of the Irish has done anything they wanted. And that includes running the ball as Walker takes it to the 30-yard line. Well, with the holidays just around the corner, we've got the best selection of Notre Dame gifts available anywhere. Fighting Irish fans can go to und.com to find all the gear you're looking for. Use discount code CSTV Live, all in lowercase during checkout for an exclusive 10% discount. Show your Notre Dame spirit with official team gear today. You mentioned those gifts. It was funny. Coach Weiss was talking about at 4.30 sometimes he shows up for work and some of these kids are sickos. He calls them out looking for autographs. He goes, it's a cheap Christmas present for these college students. And it's 4.30 a.m. Quinn hit as he throws, tipped and incomplete. Samar just still almost got a hand on it. Drew Fowler had dropped into coverage. And that time the Falcons do get a little bit of pressure on Brady Quinn and they said coming into the game that they thought that they had to find some way to get some pressure. That time, Austin Randall, number 52, a 230-pound junior, fights off the block and gets in and gets a little pressure on Brady Quinn. This drive for Notre Dame, seven plays, 57 yards, two minutes and 48 seconds. Walker has carried the bulk of the load in this drive. He is to the 22. Make it the 23 for Walker. Fowler with the hit. Drew Fowler, weak side linebacker for Air Force, number 33, is a coach's son. His dad, Gary, was the head coach at Clayton High School in Clayton, North Carolina. 
You want to know why Darius Walker has room to run. Big number 68, Ryan Harris. He's right there, and they're just shoving those defensive linemen of Air Force six and seven yards into the second level, and Darius Walker isn't even being touched until he gets six and seven yards down the field. First down, Notre Dame. Quinn to the end zone. Touchdown, Irish. Going to the backup tight end, Marcus Freeman that time. Marcus Freeman just working in the middle of the field on that Falcon secondary again. Because of those threats on the outside, they've established the running game. Little play action that time, and Brady Quinn looking for the backup tight end right between the safeties. And Marcus Freeman comes down with another touchdown for Brady Quinn in this offense. It was his high school teammate, Ryan Harris, who had set the tone on the play before on the run by Walker. And Brady Quinn has thrown for his fourth touchdown pass. It was a blocked extra point, second of the game for Air Force. Goes out of the back of the end zone. Brady Quinn has thrown for four touchdowns today, eight touchdown passes over his last two games. We're watching the Rumble in the Rockies on CSTV. CSTV salutes the men and women of our armed forces. Plenty of Notre Dame faithful here in Colorado Springs, and they're happy with a 30-point third-quarter advantage. The latest score coming on the first touchdown of the career of senior tight end Marcus Freeman. Nine plays, 87 yards, and 3.21 off the clock. With the wind, another kick into the end zone, and Air Force won't bring it out. Let's go back and look at what happened with this Marcus Freeman touchdown. Again, Brady Quinn just going to go back. There's Freeman right there, just working in the middle of the field. And Quinn wants to go to him all the way and finds Freeman right between those safeties. And then old Gilberto Perez gets his hands up and blocks the extra point. At least Charlie Weiss will have something to work on in, you know, next week. And, and he can address his team because they're going to come out of this thing likely with a big victory. And he can be upset about something. Right. It was Perez, by the way, and Robert Cray. Second block of the game for Cray at 6'8". This one to the fullback for nothing. And now let's go to the Fieldhouse in New York for an update. All right, Tom, Adam Zucker here as we check on a couple one-loss teams. Cal, just a touchdown lead on Arizona. Deshaun Jackson, a 95-yard punt return, 62-yard reception touchdown. And South Carolina and Florida tied at seven, start of the fourth. Spurrier's return to the swamp. All right, thanks, Adam. Here in Colorado Springs, Air Force facing a second and ten after that give to the fullback, Williams. And now Sean Carney wants to go to the air. He dies. And Throws that one on the money for a completion as he finds Mark Root. You know, Root only had four catches on the season coming into this game. But for Root, that is his second of this game. Root just working there on the outside, on the left side of the offensive line, just runs about 14 yards, comes in, and beats Mike Richardson back to the inside. And that's a nice throw by Sean Carney. Carney on the option, pitches the hall, cuts back, and he is brought to the turf by Ndukwe. Boy, Ndukwe has really impressed me, Tom, with the way he's filled on the option. That's now his 11th tackle of the afternoon. And it's one thing to come up and make the tackle. And yes, that was a four-yard gain. Air Force will take that play all day, but in Dukeway comes up and look at the angle that time. A great job of using angles, the proper angle, then wrapping up and bringing down Chad Hall. Second and six for Air Force. They are employing the tight end here in the second half a little bit. That's a change of pace as Williams gets a couple yards in that carry. And that goes back to a little bit of gamesmanship when Charlie Weiss was working off of the Navy game plan versus Air Force. He had to make some adjustments. Yeah, he talked about how this offense was different because they had another package. They had a tight end package. And the Air Force coaches talked to us a little bit about the fact that they really weren't going to use the tight end a lot. But obviously, being down 33-3 to in the third quarter, looking at any option they possibly could find to move the ball. Carney has the pitch man. This is Hall. He has got the first down as Nduque wrestles him to the ground after a four-yard gain. Air Force continuing to do what they do, and Sean Carney gets down the line of scrimmage, fake the fullback, Ryan Williams get down, 
pitch is forced, and Chad Hall gets to the outside. But again, and Dukeway comes up and makes the tackle. But as Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator, told us, we don't care if the safeties have 25 tackles. We just want four yards per play. Zimikowski had 14 against Navy. He's been quiet today. Carney wanted to load and go deep. Instead, he fights hard for a two-yard gain on first down. John Carney with the football. Carney threw for over 3,800 yards in high school and 30 touchdowns in his career. Thought better of going deep. It's Victor Abiumiri that time, big number 95, coming back and making the play on Sean Carney. Air Force today averaging four yards a play. Not bad. Notre Dame, though, is at 10. A first down every play for Notre Dame on average. Carney finds Root for his third catch. And that will bring up third and about five. Once again, Trevor Laws, big number 98 in the backfield that time. That's sort of been the story. Sean Carney's hung in there very well. He's had consistent pressure immediately when he goes back to pass. Trevor Laws or Derek Landry are in the backfield forcing Sean Carney to move out. That time still makes a nice play. Laws, one of four seniors on that defensive front for Notre Dame. Nine seniors among the starters defensively for the Irish. Carney finds a man in the flat. Catch made just as he took the hit. And that's his second catch of the day and of the career for Mike Moffitt. The little used Moffitt gets flag time against ninth ranked Notre Dame and has caught both balls thrown his way. And he'll probably never forget this day, will he? Moffitt lined up on the outside of Mike Richardson and and Carney. I'll tell you what I've really been impressed with Carney as you see the time of possession almost 25 minutes for this Falcon offense. He's been under duress all day but he's hung in there and he's made some throws. And this pitch finds nothing to Chad Smith and look who's there. It's Ndukwe a career high in tackles today for the senior out of Columbus and has got 13 tackles and that time Abby Amiri's responsibility is to take the fullback so they force the pitch and Notre Dame and Rick Minner are saying we like the play of our safeties we'll have our safeties come up and make the play on the pitch Carney this is Chad Smith Smith positive yardage now in an Air Force first down and a Duque with another tackle Nice little wrinkle again from that offense of Chuck Peterson. You show action one way, it's the reverse pivot option the other way, trying to slow down those safeties a little bit who are believing their reads and filling so fast. He steps back, fakes the fullback, then pitches it out. He gets to the corner. And Chad Smith gets a nice gain up the field and another first down for this Falcon offense. This current drive, 10 plays, 50 yards. Four minutes, 45 seconds for Air Force. Carney, another pitch, and this one goes to Kip McCarthy, junior from Wichita Falls, Texas. First carry for McCarthy today. And he's stopped by Mike Richardson. Fake to the fullback once again, forced the pitch. Zibikowski forces the pitch, and there's Mike Richardson once again, fighting off that block on the outside and coming up to fill. Richardson, a senior from the Atlanta area. Second and five to the fullback this time. Ryan Williams takes it to the 24 first down. This Air Force offense, I think one of the reasons why Fisher DeBerry at halftime, you could just sense it in his voice, in his nonverbals, why he was so disappointed, because they've moved the ball. They've had success moving the ball. They just haven't finished drives. They've done poor things. They got field goals blocked. Obviously, their defense is a whole nother story, but 163 yards rushing. They've thrown a little bit, 83 yards rushing. So they have moved the ball. They just haven't finished drives and finished plays. And they have yet to find that elusive goal line. One field goal so far today for Air Force. Sean Carney pitches to McCarthy. McCarthy lets it go after he was down. And he is ruled down at the 16-yard line. They've also spread the wealth a little bit today, Trev. Kip McCarthy is the eighth different Falcon 
to run the ball for Air Force. And guess who came up and made the play that time? A very physical tackle is in Dukeway, who comes up and makes the play. And Notre Dame's really doing a little bit different defensively in a sense, as you see in Dukeway come up and makes a nice tackle as Kip McCarthy goes down. Obviously, he's down. That's not a fumble. But against Navy, Notre Dame defended the option a little bit differently. They used their interior guys to stop the fullback. And so far today, I've seen an awful lot of the five technique, defensive ends taking fullback, and the safeties forcing the pitch and ultimately making the play on those slot backs. This is the third trip into the red zone for Air Force today, and as the play clock winds down, Sean Carney elects to use a timeout, and he got that call up immediately before they got penalized. From the 15, Air Force will look for the end zone. It's 33-3 in the third quarter. I'm joined down on the field by Lieutenant Colonel Porterfield, commander of the 66th Squadron, who is being honored with those decals on the back of their helmets. Commander, how does it feel to see this unit being remembered today? Well, it's not only a special honor for the 66th Rescue Squadron with the green feet that the players are wearing today, but it's uh, an honor that the entire Air Force Search and Rescue community can share on this special Veterans Day. How did the loss of those 12 members affect this unit? Well, loss of that magnitude is not something that you get over very easily, but with time, that's exactly what we did. And since 2001, the unit has been heavily engaged in the war on terrorism with deployments to Afghanistan, Iraq, where we continue to serve today. Tom, they're working hard, and it is Veterans Day remembering everybody in the armed forces. Anne Marie, thank you very much. There's Bill Lewis on the Notre Dame coaching staff, former head coach at Georgia Tech in East Carolina. And serving as the defensive backs coach in his second season at Notre Dame and lost his son and his other son Jeff came up with the plan to honor not only his son but that entire group that went down in a helicopter crash on a training mission. Carney pitches to Hall second straight carry for Hall and on third down he is bottled up that will bring up fourth down and Trev they picked up a couple of fourth downs today a field goal really does nothing for you as the third quarter comes towards a close yeah if I'm Fisher to Barry obviously here I think it's time to go for it on fourth down but you see what Notre Dame's doing Tom Zabikowski his responsibility to force the pitch and then the safety comes over Tom joins and Duque and Duke way they had together make the tackle and again Mike Richardson these corners and safeties doing a nice job of filling and getting up and making tackles. They worked all week on their tackling and angles coming into this game. Fourth and a long one. Carney to the air, to the end zone. Sooner a leaping grab. Touchdown, Air Force. And the Falcons find Pater for the first time today. Sean Carney hanging in there again under heavy duress. Derek Landry from his defensive tackle position comes in and drills Sean Carney, but he hangs in there and throws a nice touchdown. And finally, Air Force finishes the drive. Look, Carney, as he plays a little play action, gets drilled by Landry and goes to the outside and finds Suter for the touchdown. Just the fourth catch of the year for Bo Suter, his second catch of this game. And a sure-handed grab. The extra point is good. And Air Force, with its first touchdown of the game, on its third trip into the red zone. And for both Suter, a senior from Laramie, Wyoming, his second touchdown reception this season. Carney, four for four on that drive. That's got to give this offense a little bit of confidence now going into fourth quarter because, you know, as Fisher DeBerry told them in, in the first half at halftime, we moved the football. We simply didn't finish drives. We had the block field goal. So it was a nice drive that time as they finished down, and Sean Carney made the play. Take a look at our Xbox Live big play replay. 16 plays, 80 yards to cover the ground for Air Force. This is Darius Walker setting up Notre Dame's touchdown as Notre Dame kept it on the ground on their last possession. Walker carrying the bulk of the low before they found the tight end. Marcus Freeman, his first career touchdown catch. Air Force able to answer at 33-10 with 17 ticks left on the third quarter clock. A short kick. And it goes out of bounds in front of David Grimes. And a flag on the plate will start it at the 35. Illegal kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. Let's see if Notre Dame gets a playoff. 
before the third quarter comes to an end with 11 seconds left on the clock and they'll start it at the spot. Beautiful Falcon Stadium here at the United States Air Force Academy. Sold out couldn't get a ticket for this one late in the week. It's been an interesting game Tom for Brady Quinn he finds himself 12 of 15 for 192 yards and four touchdowns. It's almost been like seven on seven. He's had all kinds of time to throw down the field. The time remaining will be the fourth quarter as Brady Quinn tries to stay warm in front of his head coach Charlie Weiss. It's the end of the third and it's 33 10 Notre Dame. Atmosphere here at Falcon Stadium, a sold out crowd in Colorado Springs. Notre Dame leading 33 to 10. Brady Quinn back at the controls and once again leaning on Darius Walker just a little bit for a six yard gain. We talked about Brady Quinn's weapons earlier this game, and here is how he has taken advantage of them this afternoon. Five catches for Samarja at 100 yards. McKnight, 53 yards. Carlson, a touchdown. And Walker, one catch for eight yards. He also had a drop. And again, we haven't had a lot of opportunities have the Irish. I mean, Jeff Samarja with those five receptions, they simply haven't been on the field all that much in this game. 21 plays at halftime. 12th carry of the game for Walker, and he is at about 107 yards on the day now. It is a very balanced Notre Dame attack this afternoon, even though it started in the air. Yeah, they started out throwing the ball, stretching this Falcon defense, and once they stretched that defense, then they could go back to this young man right here, Darius Walker, 12 carries, 107 yards. And there's some people who said, well, what what's wrong with Darius Walker this year? He hasn't quite had the numbers that some people thought he would have. Well, he's averaging over four yards a carry, but when you have Brady Quinn and those wide receivers, he simply hasn't had the as many touches as he would like as well. Third and two now. Walker's idol growing up playing high school football in Georgia was a guy by the name of Herschel Walker. Quinn on the keeper. Air Force thought they had him stop. They're going to mark that one right at the 45, and that'll be a first down for Notre Dame. I think one of the things, Tom, that you and I both agreed on is as we stood there with Brady Quinn, we were struck by how physical he looks and his size. And the young man said, Hey, what can I say? I love to work out. He had thighs, huge thighs and big guns. I mean, the guy lifts weights and just loves to exercise, and it shows right there. You get a third and short, simply run behind your center. It's a first down. Trev, this is a guy, Brady Quinn, who went on spring break and picked up a one-week membership to a gym down in the islands. Walker cuts back. Here goes Darius Walker in a foot race to the 20 and dragged down inside the 20-yard line. With a cutback and a burst of speed, Walker carried defenders to the 16. Again, just a great job by the offensive line getting on their blocks. Nice block right there by David Grinds, number 11. Darius Walker simply cuts it back against the grain, and it's a foot race, and he gets a nice first round. Look at that right there. See that vision? Did you see his eyes? Saw the hole, and then came right back to the middle of the field as that Falcon defense had overpursued. Covers 39 yards on the sprint. And Notre Dame in the red zone again. Grimes in motion. Why not give it back to Walker? And he's got plenty of room on the left side, and he has a gain of eight. That time, it almost seemed like Walker was running slow motion, waiting for a cutback. Very patient run. We'll set up second and two. I think some of the things you miss sometimes are the blocking by these wide receivers. Right there is David Grimes. And then on the outside, there's Rayma McKnight. Those wide receivers, not only have they set records for Notre Dame in terms of receiving, but complete wide receivers blocking down the field. There's McKnight. He's at the top of the screen. And now shuffles into motion. Quinn swings it out. This is Grimes. Grimes to the five and ridden out of bounds. After picking up the first down is David Grimes, a sophomore from Detroit. And they go back and say, okay, we've made Raymond McKnight block on the left side. Jeff, your time out there on the right side, your turn to block a defensive back. And Jeff Samarja that time does a nice job. Here's Samarja right here working on the outside. 
And he goes down, acts like it's a pass, and comes up, makes a nice block, and look at David Grimes. Jeff Samarja with a great effort on the block on the outside. All week we talked about the Air Force wide receivers and how it's their job to block. Um, but the Notre Dame wide receiver is doing a fantastic job. John Sullivan, the senior center, making his 28th career start today. is a little banged up. Jeff Samarja, of course, makes waves in the football field but makes money on the diamond. Here he is with the Boise Cubs. Fifth round pick of the Chicago Cubs last year coming out of Paul Maneri's program at Notre Dame. Fifth rounder second pick overall. And with a fastball that he told me is now topping out at about 98 miles an hour. Five catches for 100 yards today for Samarja. When played Baseball in the summer up in Boise, then a couple of starts in Peoria. And he said his start in the Midwest League in Lansing, Michigan. He was more nervous for a baseball game starting in Lansing than he was for the football game in East Lansing. Walker, straight up the gut, touchdown, Notre Dame. Make it look easy when you have a running back like Darius Walker. But again, this offensive line at the point of attack has really just dominated this Falcon front four. We talked about how much smaller they are, but look at the big offensive line. You get the pull by Dan Santuzzi that time, and Darius Walker just walks into the end zone for a touchdown. The Irish with the opportunity to go up 40 to 10. And it's certainly been a busy day for Carl Joya. The Notre Dame place kicker. John Sullivan, by the way, the center is back in this game on special teams playing left guard, and Joya pushes this one. So he's had one block, and now he misses one. Darius Walker carries it to the end zone, and it's Notre Dame by 29. Thirty nine ten Notre Dame out in front of Air Force on the surface. It seems like everything has gone right for Notre Dame. Not so when it comes to the spirit squad. Oh. Not fundamentally sound in special teams today at times and not fundamentally sound with a flag. You've got to be aware of your surroundings. On the return Air Force with a solid return to the 30 yard line goes Chris Thomas. That might be the only thing that's gone wrong for Notre Dame today. Well, I think defensively, they, you know, they've allowed some yards. I mean, 61 plays for Air Force, 268 yards, 4.4 yards per play. I mean, they take those. As you see, Sean Carney come on. He's been 9 of 12, 95 yards. I think he's had a nice day. Just that Air Force has had no answer for this Notre Dame offense. They've averaged 10 yards per play. This is a pitch to Hall. And it takes it to the 35. Let's go back to the field house in New York for an update on today's college football scores. All right, Tom, things going really well for the Irish as you look around the country. Sure, Ohio State and Michigan are on their way to wins, but Louisville already lost. Florida trailing Steve Spurrier in his return to the Swamp. Auburn lost earlier today to Georgia, and California trails Arizona. All these teams ahead of Notre Dame in the BCS standings. Adam, thank you very much. And you talk about that Cal game. And that, even though they're a one-loss team, Trev, that's that's a game that Notre Dame does not want to see Cal lose. They want to see Cal win, stay a one-loss team, because they need USC to look more impressive should USC take care of Cal. Strength of schedule, yeah. They want USC to beat Cal at its best, which will obviously help Charlie Weiss and this team down the road. But it's interesting, all these one-loss teams, and Notre Dame certainly feels like they're in the mix now as Auburn goes down. How about the Georgia Bulldogs? I mean, they had struggled so much, had lost to Vanderbilt and Kentucky, now come back and beat a team like Auburn. So the question, Tom, is at what point do we consider Rutgers an undefeated Rutgers as a legitimate national championship contender, or does Notre Dame with one loss figure ahead of an undefeated Rutgers? Root springs free, and Root takes it to the 18-yard line as Sean Carney finds the junior from Tallahassee. That's the thing with this offense. It only takes one play, and Mike Richardson working over there at his right cornerback position. And you see Sean Carney, they fake to the fullback, sits back, sets his feet and gets his eyes in the backfield, does Mike Richardson, and Root gets behind him for a nice gain. 43 yards on this toss from Carney, and 
He wasn't the only one open. Chad Hall had worked his way free across the middle. Thought about pulling it back, takes it for a yard. You know, you bring up Rutgers and talking with Weiss this week up in South Bend, he was very direct what he thought should happen should Rutgers go undefeated. I allowed him to make a statement. I said, you know, he wanted to be a sports commentator. So I said, all right, coach, here's your chance. Put your sports commentator hat on. And I said, if Rutgers, and at the time, if Louisville, Big East team goes undefeated, should they play for a national championship over a one-loss team? And he had absolutely, he said, an uh, undefeated Rutgers should play for the national championship over my one-loss Notre Dame. Well, he's also a Jersey guy, so keep that in mind. There's a carry up the middle for Air Force. Jacoby Kendrick, the fullback with the carry. It's been a big day for offense. 37 plays, 371 yards for Notre Dame. Air Force, not too shabby themselves, 65 for 325. So I'm saying Fisher DeBerry has to feel pretty good about the way his offense moved the ball. They didn't always finish at the block field goal. They did get the touchdown, the throwing touchdown from Sean Carney, and another nice drive right here. Falls in the floating option, and he takes it for a first down for Air Force. And another tackle by Ndukwe, but as Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator, said, again, getting to the outside, we'll take the four-yard carry and a first down. It's the 21st tackle for Ndukwe at safety in this ballgame. 21st for Ndukwe, a career high by nine. And quite frankly, we haven't heard much from Tom Zubikowski, who's freeing in Duke way for a lot of those tackles. His responsibility has been the quarterback. So he's forced Sean Carney to pitch the ball. Then Indukeway comes up and makes the tackle. Play action, ball tip. Kendrick still hauls it in. Dives for the pylon. The fans say he's in and the officials as well. A great move on the sideline by Jacoby Kendrick. Boy, I've been impressed with Sean Carney and how he's hung in there. Hasn't had a lot of action on the ground, but a good job that time of getting to the outside. A nice throw to the outside. And Jacoby Kendrick, all 230 pounds of him, reaches forward. And then Dukeway can't get him down, and it's a touchdown for the Falcons. That is the first catch of the season for Jacoby Kendrick. Not his first touchdown catch, his first reception overall. And Air Force has scored on three of four trips into the red zone and some great footwork down the sideline. Here he does, just slips out of the backfield and that he, time. He might have slipped out at the two, Trev, his right foot. There's an Air Force player where the officials are chatting and they are reviewing this one. I thought his right foot was on the paint at the two. You take Suter up the field, which takes the safety with him, and you sneak Jacoby Kendrick underneath. The question is, on that sideline, did he go out of bounds? Yeah, I think it looks like the right foot, at least the right heel, appeared as if it was out of bounds at about the two-yard line. So the officials review this one. It seemed like a fairly clear step on the out of bounds line at the two by Kendrick. Are you impressed with Sean Carney, though? I mean, as a quarterback in terms of what they ask him to do in this offense and how he's hung in there. Consistent pressure from Landry all day. Trevor, Love. these defensive linemen have been in his face. They've asked him to throw the ball. He's done a nice job. He's 11 of 14, 145 yards. And right now, two touchdowns. We'll see if this one holds up. I think both of us agree. After review, the player did not step out of bounds on the two, and it is a touchdown. Wow. Oh, well, I know. Well, from the angle that we saw up here, Tom, it was pretty clear that Jacoby Kendrick had stepped out of bounds. Maybe they had a different end zone shot that showed that Jacoby indeed did not step out of bounds. And the extra point is good for Air Force and kicker Zach Sasser.
time for the cadets to do some push-ups as the Air Force Academy finds the end zone as Jacoby Kendrick dives in from two yards out. 39-17, ninth-ranked Notre Dame leading Air Force, 8.44 to go in the fourth quarter with Trev Alberts. I'm Tom Art alongside Anne-Marie Anderson down on the field on what has turned into a chilly Saturday afternoon on this Veterans Day. And here at the Air Force Academy, a score for the Falcons, and that has the Rowdies in Section 8 fired up. And some push-ups for the cadets today. Onside kick coming. And that one is taken by Notre Dame. It only went nine yards. Falcons had no chance to field that one nine yards in. It's been a great day for Brady Quinn, even though it's been a little used day for Quinn. Four touchdown passes today, his seventh career. Four touchdown game. Take a look at the Heisman winners in the history of the University of Notre Dame. And Brady Quinn looking to add his name to that list, which includes Leon Hart and Johnny Latner in 1953. Paul Hornig in 56. And the names continue. No school has as many Heisman winners as does Notre Dame. Tim Brown the latest in 1987. This is the freshman Aldridge. And he takes it for eight yards. And the Heisman watch coming down to the last couple of weeks. Here's what CSTV.com has in their top five. Troy Smith, then Quinn. Michigan's Mike Hart, Steve Slayton from West Virginia still in the top five, and a freshman quarterback from Texas. Yeah, see, I, I, obviously this race is not over. I think some people have already conceded and said that Troy Smith is a natural winner. He was way out in front. But then last week, it was a conservative game plan by Jim Trestle, but only 100 yards passing and the interception. I think that Brady Quinn, especially after this performance, and then moving on, you have Army, and then the, the opportunity against USC. He is right in this race. It certainly is not over. This race this season has really been one of guys dropping out, whether you're Garrett Wolf or Calvin. And Johnson some early names based on non-production have fallen out of the top five the top ten and you're going to find a guy I think at the end of this year you're going to find a guy whose consistency will win this whether it's Smith or Quinn or somebody else and it happens to be whoever plays on the team that wins a lot of games and Troy Smith has you know made a lot of plays his team is ranked number one and he's got a great opportunity against a very good Michigan defense but Adrian Peterson gets hurt, so he kind of fell out of the yep. list. And so there's been some guys who were added. You saw Colt McCoy. He's a redshirt freshman on that list. And then also, how about Ray Rice at Rutgers? There's another name you should add to that list. It's been a race of attrition thus far with a couple of you, names you've mentioned jumping in. And Brady Quinn cementing his spot at least in the top two with four touchdown passes today. And everybody getting it done for Notre Dame, four different receivers for those four touchdown passes. Quinn trying to let Samarja do the work. The pass was incomplete. They rule it incomplete and not a backwards pass. And will bring up third and nine. And how many times do you see wide receivers who think it's a forward pass who stand there, and then in the end it's a lateral and the guy picks it up? Jeff That's Samarja up doing the right thing. There's Jeff just takes a step back. Again, look at that huge cushion. Nobody from Air Force there, and Samarja gets up and gets on the ball. Pardon me, Chase Anastasio, the senior from Burke, Virginia. His 23 next to Samarja's 83. Well, we talked about the opportunity for this Notre Dame team and the opportunity for Brady Quinn. I think both of them, as a team and as a quarterback, have answered those questions here against Air Force. Two seconds on the game clock, and Brady Quinn will use a timeout to chat about it with Charlie Weiss. Notre Dame in front, 39-17 with 6.51 to go in the fourth quarter from Colorado Springs. 39-17, ninth-ranked Notre Dame on top of Air Force. And Brady Quinn in the offense at the controls again. They face a third and nine. Four touchdown passes for Brady Quinn this afternoon. And he drops into the shotgun. Once again, time, all the time he wants. We'll step up, throw, no, nope. he eats it as he gets hit and taken down. A coverage sack that time as Quinn was begging for a place to throw up but didn't have anybody. And Randall comes up from his linebacker spot, Austin Randall. 
And again, look at the time that Brady Quinn has to throw the football. There's a huge pocket. Nobody pressures him, steps to the outside, and finally Austin Randall, number 52, comes up and makes the play. Second sack allowed by that Notre Dame line today. This is fourth and 12 now. So Marge at the bottom of your screen, McKnight at the top. Play action. Three-man route. Looking over the middle for Samarja. Overthrew him. As they go for it on a fourth down. Now let's go back to the field house in New York for another update. All right, thanks, Tom. Give the ball to Tim Tebow. Gators down six with three minutes to go. He busts through 13 yards. Florida on top of Spurrier, 17-16. All right, thanks, Adam. 39-17. Notre Dame will have the opportunity to use a young quarterback next year when Quinn leaves. Might be Demetrius Jones. Redshirting this year, and he was Sean Carney all this week as the scout team quarterback running the option. No gain on the first down. Now let's take a look at our Xbox Live. Big play replay. I think Sean Carney's had a nice job today in throwing the football here. Mark Root gets beats Mike Richardson down the field. Then a little play action as Carney rolls to the right and finds Jacoby Kendrick, who gets in for the touchdown. We thought he was out. He was ruled in, and Sean Carney is 11 of 14 for 145 yards and two touchdowns. Fans in Section 8 having a good time. Two touchdown passes for Carney and an injured player on the field for Notre Dame, and that's the last thing you want to see happen in a game at this point. Terrell Lambert with five and a half minutes left. Many of the starters still in for Charlie White. And Terrell Lambert's going to be right here as the block comes low. Suter goes down to block Terrell Lambert. Blocks him right on the knee. A perfectly legal block, by the way. Wide receivers can cut block, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of people really dislike going against this offense. Well, whether it's Air Force or Navy, they both run several of the same. This is a pass complete to Victor Thompson, and Thompson has a first down. Victor Thompson runs some pretty nice routes. I mean, he's been open today, and Sean Carney, when he's had the chance and had the time, and so far Chuck Peterson, I think, has done a pretty good job of moving Sean Carney. That time moves him to the right, and he beats Ambrose Wooden on the outside. Look at Carney here. Again, there's another cut block right there along the defensive front and throws a strike on the outside to Victor Thompson. Carney is 7 of 8 in the second half, and now he's going to go 8 of 9 as he finds Root. Again, a career-high day for Root. Still on his feet, and he takes it to the 14-yard line. Notre Dame is holding the football, saying that they have a fumble recovery, but the officials right now, at least, are marking the ball down on contact. Sean Carney is over 100 yards for the second half. Now at 138 after this 41-yard pitch and catch. Little pump fake that time. Freezes the corner. Ambrose Wooden and Root gets behind him. And another nice throw. And Root comes back to the middle of the field and gets extra yards. And now the fullback, Jacoby Kendrick, takes it inside the 10. He's to the 9. See, I think it's important, too, for this Notre Dame defense. If we get deep in the fourth quarter, it's 39 to 17. 39 to 17 for the voters. Remember, the Harris Poll voters, some people didn't see this game. They're going to look at the score. Need to keep this Falcon offense out of the end zone. On the pitch to Hall. Surrounded and a flag on the play. Looks like holding against Bo Suter will bring it back. Chad Hall has certainly had a busy, busy day. And this third trip into the red zone, this half for Air Force. During the run, illegal block in the back. Offense number 22. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. 20 carries today for Chad Hall. Suter had the hold. 20 carries doesn't sound like a lot to a typical running back. That would be 25, 28 would be a lot. But in this offense, which spreads the ball among so many different guys who touch it, 20 is an awful lot. And they tried to give the ball a little less to Chad Hall this year because they really felt, coaches told us, that last year he wore down a little bit. He worked hard in the offseason to get stronger, but they tried to limit his touches. Pressure on Carney, and he steps up out of the pocket, gets to the line of scrimmage, and brought down 
And Carney has had to do that a few times tonight. John Ryan with the tackle. We're going to get a timeout on the field. That time, Notre Dame came with a blitz. They brought Ambrose Wooden on the outside. Tom Zibikowski from the other side. And Sean Carney had to step up. But boy, we talked about making a statement, having an opportunity to make plays. Sean Carney, especially in a passing game, 13 of 16, 197 yards and two touchdowns. CSTV's coverage of college football today doesn't end with this one. Our triple header rolls on down to Memphis at 8 Eastern for a Conference USA matchup between UCF and the Memphis Tigers. Then at 1130 Eastern, it's Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois. Football is a way of life. Live it with CSTV. And during the timeout, the cadets stand a watch. Third and 13 on the horizon for Air Force. Fisher to Barry in his 23rd season here. Three times the conference coach of the year. And the 1985 national coach of the year. And impressive about that team, which finished 12-1. and one. And in the nation's top 10, he had 62 kids on that team on the dean's list. Hmm. Yeah, we were talking about what's the average cadet coming in? What's, you know, what's his GPA? What's his SET? Yeah, about 1,300. So that eliminates Tom Hart and Trev <laughs> Alberts from ever going to Air Force. Well, right off the bat, it does. Carney into the flats. Catch made by Suter, and he is inbounds. And the clock will continue to run. Out at the nine, and that brings up fourth down for Fisher to Barry. It's kind of been a game of what ifs. This is an Air Force offense now, Tom, that has over 400 yards of total offense. They've ran for 200 yards. They've passed for over 200 yards. This is a, a complete effort. They just haven't always finished those drives. It's been a what if day for this offense. See if they can get it on this fourth down. Carney pressured, wrapped up, still on his feet, and Carney finally goes down among a host of gold helmets. And right at the center is John Ryan, the freshman from Westlake, Ohio, and the powerhouse program at St. Ignatius. Again, there's Sean Carney as he goes back. You get the initial pressure from the outside. Steps up into the pressure, and as you mentioned that time, the number 90, John Ryan, finishes him off. Notre Dame comes on the field without Brady Quinn at quarterback Evan Sharpley sophomore from Marshall Michigan will now direct the offense over the last three minutes of this one they've got some great quarterbacks waiting in the wings and a false start will keep this one from getting started Brady Quinn's numbers on the day are, are good but they're false also offense. comparable to Sean Carney's numbers today five yards the down remains first and the difference was the big plays early in the game for Brady Quinn, who finishes 14 of 19 for over 200 yards, 207 yards, four touchdowns. He had that long 51 yards to Jeff Samarja, but no interceptions, and that's a real key. Well, Carney has thrown for 205 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and for Notre Dame, it's all about what's next. Army next, and then at Southern Cal on Thanksgiving weekend. It's tough to blame Notre Dame for this schedule when you look back at the teams that they have on this. North Carolina is a great example. They were added to the schedule when Mac Brown was a head coach in Chapel Hill when he was losing one game a year. And I'm not saying that you can assume five, ten years out that they're going to be a top ten team, but you certainly expect them to be better than a one win team in a down ACC. And I don't know how you can hold against Charlie Weiss winning down the stretch here. A lot of people point to the fact that they haven't played particularly well. I mean, they beat a Stanford team. UCLA, they were in all kinds of trouble with UCLA. They were playing a second-team quarterback who couldn't even talk. In North Carolina, the second half, they just played miserable in offense the second half of that game. And I think some of the voters now, you know, if they look at the final stats in this game and they see an Air Force team that has over 400 yards of offense against Notre Dame's defense, again, do they hold it against Notre Dame? Even though it's a 39-17 to 17 ball game, do they hold it against them in terms of those one-loss teams and where they fit in terms of the national championship picture? Freshman Munier Prince Added to the Smet High School in St. Louis, just got his first carry. And wouldn't you note it, the Notre Dame sold all 5,000 tickets for this one. 
And that doesn't account for those Notre Dame faithful in this time zone that bought their tickets here in Colorado Springs for this sellout crowd. Prince bottled up, can't find the corner. Brought down by Adam Zanotti, who had that big fumble return against Army to swing the momentum in that game. And Air Force just never had a chance to seize momentum today. And I think it was snatched from them right at the beginning of the game. That 14 points early just shocked Air Force and those huge plays by Jeff Samarja. And really, before Air Force even had a chance to think about anything, it was 14 to nothing. As you look at the quarterback comparisons, and Sean Carney just wanted an opportunity, wanted to prove that he could play at a big time level. We know about his ability to run the ball, but so efficient 14 of 17, 205 yards, two touchdowns, did a nice job through the air against that Notre Dame secondary and Carney ends up with 42 yards on the ground and it's safe to say that Brady Quinn was given a lot more time by his offensive line than Sean Carney was today. And I wonder what it will take for Brady Quinn to make noise in the Heisman race. It will probably take a big game against Southern Cal. Here's Jeff Price. Just the second punt of the day for Notre Dame. And Price steps out of his own end zone and gets it away. Chris Sutton dances at the 42. Tries to find the Air Force sideline and gets upended at the 46 yard line. A minute four left in this one from the Air Force Academy. And Notre Dame in control. Here's Sutton on the return. Great block out there, and Sutton just lines up. And that's Maurice Crum Jr., who gets blown up out there on pump coverage. And a nice job by Bo Suter of getting it up the sideline for a nice return. Affleck is the proud sponsor of the first and ten line for today's game. Special teams play has been big today. Hunter Altman with a couple of big plays for Air Force. Five yards tacked on at the end of the run. So if you're Charlie Weiss, as Jim Hollis now comes in a quarterback for Air Force, both teams have gone to their reserves. What do you work on this week in practice as you get ready for Army? And an Army team that never got blown away by Air Force and should therefore on paper be a big mismatch. I'll answer that question in a moment. But first, we go back to the studio and Adam Zucker. Well, guys, just when you thought someone might be sucking up to Ryan suck up, a chance to win it for South Carolina from 48 yards, but Jarvis Moss with the block for the Gators. Florida secures the win over Steve Spurrier. All right, thanks, Adam. That obviously would have been a big loss for Florida and benefited Notre Dame greatly. Air Force is trying to squeeze some plays out before this one ends on third and short, and a toss finds nothing. So the, the question I pose to you, Trev, mm -hmm. what is Charlie Weiss work on this week? What can Notre Dame focus on? I think it's pretty offense obvious that this offense has the opportunity to be prolific. I mean, I don't know that there are many defenses that can slow down this offense. I think there are problems with their defense. I think it's a okay defense. I think they're soft in certain areas, and I think special teams. There are plenty of work to be done on this Notre Dame team, specifically defensively, and then, of course, on the special teams. Notre Dame runs its record to 9-1. and one. The lone blemish a loss to Michigan. Fisher DeBerry's Falcons were thinking upset. They couldn't find it today against the ninth-ranked Fighting Irish, whose BCS hopes stay alive, and the Heisman hopes of quarterback Brady Quinn stay right there, at the very least, in the top couple in the nation. 39-17, Notre Dame over Air Force today after an opening barrage from Brady Quinn, including a 51-yard scoring strike to Jeff Samarja to get the Irish on the board early. A sold-out crowd here at the Air Force Academy came out to see not only Notre Dame, but also Brady Quinn. And if you're a fighting Irish fan, certainly not disappointed. Notre Dame with 46 plays total 
on offense the entire game. Coach Weiss talked to us about that, how Air Force controls the clock and they had to make every possession count, every play count. And I think the start of the game, making those early possessions count when they marched right down the field, huge plays. Remember they went 80 yards in two plays. The touchdown to Samarja up 14 to nothing. They made every play count, averaging 8.3 yards per play on offense to the Irish. On this Veterans Day, Notre Dame will salute the men and women in uniform as they file in behind the Falcons as Air Force salutes its fans and cadets with the playing of the alma mater. for Notre Dame this afternoon on Veterans Day and Marie Anderson our sideline reporter today is trying to find out everything she can about what is up next for Notre Dame. Notre Dame flies home tonight after a trip to the Rocky Mountains results in a win and Marie is standing by with Charlie Wise. Coach earlier this week you said you wanted to see improvement in all three facets of the game. What did you see today? Well, we were, you know, we were spotty. You know, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we did some, we did a lot of things well. You know, you know, they they scored a couple times on us there in the second half, and they moved the ball on us. Really, in the second and third quarter, they had the ball mo most of the time right there. You know, you know, we we got a lot of work to do, but it, I thought that it was a pretty, you know, just a, you know, you know, pretty methodical win. What is some of that work you need to do as you finish out your regular season? Well, I mean, when you're, you know, you're, you're at a point where you're 33 to three, and you have a chance to just, you know, just put the game away. I think at that point, what you have to do is just put the game away. And you know, they come back and score a couple touchdowns. You know, I wanted, you know, I had everyone yanked already. You know, with the 13 minute mark, I got the whole second offense ready to go. And they go right down the field and score again. All of a sudden, you know, it's nine minutes left to go in the game. It's it's a three score game. You know, you'd like to just make sure that you're just finishing them off. Thank you, Coach. Amory, thank you very much. No quit ever in the Air Force Falcons, and that's why Charlie Weiss is a little perturbed with his effort today. 39-17, we got more to come from Colorado Springs. CSTV Football Nation, Notre Dame versus Air Force has been brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Hear the sports, talk, news, entertainment, and 100% commercial free music you want. Sirius Satellite Radio, the best radio on radio. And by Xbox Live. It's good to play together. And a 39-17 win for ninth-ranked Notre Dame over the Air Force Falcons this afternoon alongside Trev Alberts. I'm Tom Hart. You take a look at the guys who performed today. No surprise, it's Brady Quinn who steps up big time. Yeah, 14-19, very efficient, 207 yards, four touchdowns. More importantly, no turnovers. I thought that was a story. And what he did early in the game, 14 to nothing before Air Force knew it hit him, founding Jeff Samarja right down the middle of the field right here, beating that Falcon secondary in to the end zone. I thought that Brady Quinn was so efficient, finds his tight end there, and then Marahima McKnight breaks the tackle, gets into the end zone. Brady Quinn, a terrific effort at quarterback. Brady Quinn is our serious satellite radio player of the game for directing this Notre Dame offense, and he is standing by with our Ann Marie Anderson. Brady, how have you managed to score eight touchdown passes in the last two games? You know, really, uh, it's not it's not about me. I think it's about our offensive line and our wide receivers outside. Those guys have been doing a great job of getting open and making plays. And our O-line's obviously giving us a lot of time. 
You have a game next week against Army, then a big game at USC in Southern Cal. What needs to happen in improvement before you get to that last game? We just got to keep being uh, more and more efficient. I think every time we get out there on the field, you know, our goal is always to score, but we really need to start doing that. Um, today, you know, obviously uh, we were a little bit disappointed because we didn't score every drive, and, and that was one of our goals coming in this game. Thanks very much. Thanks. All right, thanks, Anne Maria. 39 to 17 win. Notre Dame's only blemish that lost to Michigan. The Irish now 9 and 1 with two games remaining. Our final score today, 39-17, Notre Dame over Air Force. For more, log on to CSTV.com, the ultimate destination for scores, news, highlights, and analysis. This has been a presentation of CSTV College Sports Television, the 24-hour college sports network from CBS Sports. For Anne Marie Anderson, Trev Alberts, and our entire CSTV crew, I'm Tom Hart. Now let's go to the Fieldhouse in New York for Game Tracker Live. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. So Notre Dame dominant in the win, 39-17. Welcome back to the Fieldhouse. Adam Zucker here with Scott Zolak. We'll head back to Colorado Springs shortly. But first, Notre Dame fans, reason to scoreboard watch on this day as the BCS Top Ten got a little topsy-turvy, but not among the two big powers in the Big Ten, Ohio State and Michigan set to meet next week. Let's first check on the top-ranked Buckeyes against Northwestern. Troy Smith, one of four touchdown passes on the day. Buckeyes up 7-zip. And the defense had it going, too. 14-0 when C.J. Batcher is picked off by Brandon Mitchell, who takes it back 46 yards. Buckeyes in control, and then we get some more Troy Smith coming up here, Scott. Yeah, his guys, uh, he's tops right now in the Heisman race. It's going to be between he and Brady Quinn and maybe Ray Rice. If Ray Rice can keep it going, and Rutgers beats West Virginia. Buckeyes win big. Michigan at Indiana. Chad Henney back to pass. Deep down the right side. Perfect touch for Steve Breston. He scores easily. Michigan up 21-3 on Henney's second touchdown of the day. Then Breston going to run back the punt. First through the middle. Only the punter to beat. No problem. 83 yards on the return. 231 total yards on the day. Mason Blue rolling 34-3. And so the matchup is finally set for next week. Ohio State against Michigan, where the loser always scores 21 points. Yeah, tickets are probably going to be face value. Pick them up easy yeah, on the no street outside the stadium. No problem. And, and so what do you look for in that game? Because we've talked about this now since, what, late August? Ohio State, ha has Ohio State been too dominant? Has Michigan showed enough to contend with the Buckeyes? Well, you're just worried that both teams were looking forward to playing each other on the 18th. But here's the thing. You really got to like what Ohio State's doing. Troy Smith really keeping it going. And Pittman, probably one of the best running backs that we don't really talk about, plays for the number one ranked team. And you can't ignore what Ohio State's doing on defense. Losing guys like A.J. Hawk and Carpenter the NFL draft. Seems like they just reload and they just put new guys in, freshmen, sophomores. They're getting it done. This is going to be a dandy next week. Can't wait till next week, but still lots to talk about from this week, like the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, making his third trip to Gainesville this season. The past two were to be honored for what he did as a Gator. Today, trying to lead South Carolina to its first ever win in the Swamp and ruin Florida's national title hopes. This was a close one. There he is. Got the visor on, but it's not a Gators visor anymore. 30 seconds to play in the first. We're scoreless. Mike Davis powering through the Gators defense. 7 0 game cops. We go to the second quarter. Chris Lee, great first half. The pump fake finds Dallas Baker a little underthrown, but he manages to get, get away with one there. 7 7 at the half. Fourth quarter. South Carolina driving. It's Davis again. 14 yards. The extra point would be no good. 16 10. So late in the fourth, Florida possession. It's Tim Tebow with three minutes to play. Tim Tebow running? 13-yard touchdown, 17-16 Gators. It would come down to a kick. Ryan sucked up from 48 yards away, blocked by Jarvis Moss. He keeps the Gators' national title hopes alive. 17-16 the final in the swamp. However, Auburn not as lucky and not a member of the one-loss club anymore. Georgia's Greg Lumpkin. Eight yards, seven nothing Georgia. Bulldogs up ten nothing. Matt Stafford to Kenneth Harris, 39 yards down at the one yard line. It would set up a touchdown in trouble for Brandon Cox today. Awful today. 4-12, throwing the football. Four picks, as many completions as interceptions. That's awful for an Auburn quarterback. And Georgia takes it 37 to 15. Here's Tommy Tuberville. Don't take anything away from Georgia. They're a good football team, and you know you find out a lot about yourself when you. You've stumbled a little bit like they did, and uh, they bounced back. But uh, it was just, it was a tough day for us all the way around. Uh, and again, it, it's none of these players' fault, it's mine. We'll get it corrected because we got a big game next week. 
to everyone's credit, they they stayed together and they they kept fighting, and uh, and then then good things happened to us today, and I'm just real thankful for that. Uh, maybe Tuberville will push for the playoffs some more, but uh, the SEC, there's always great games all day long, and another one coming up tonight with Arkansas Rel against Tennessee. Relentless pressure each and every week in the SEC. Give Georgia credit for hanging around, playing through the rest of the season where they really don't have that much to play for except which bowl they're going to go to. Big flop by Auburn, like you said, all attention tonight on Arkansas and Tennessee. Steve Spurrier, this close again. I yeah. Was, I was rooting for him. Yeah, really. Beat Urban Meyer last year. Real close and plenty more to talk about with the SEC at the bottom of the hour on SEC Football Nation. But coming up, we'll continue to go around the country and check on the race for the ACC championship game. Clemson trying to end a three-game losing streak while Georgia Tech looked to clinch the Coastal Division. And we'll head back to our crew in Colorado Springs where Notre Dame was the team of the Air Force. Well, we saw Auburn go down. Same fate for Cal. Second loss of the year at the hands of Arizona in the desert. The Wildcats take it 24-20, intercepting Nate Longshore three times in the game. BCS implications abound in that one. Boise State not too happy after Rutgers gets all the pub now. San Jose State beating up on the Broncos 7-3 as the first half is just about over. And while the Broncos try to claw their way into the BCS picture, Notre Dame is right there and looking up at the standings, knowing that all these teams are falling throughout the afternoon while the Irish went after a clinching of the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, taking on Air Force right here on CSTV Football Nation. Let's show you the highlights from this one as Brady Quinn came to town and Fisher to Barry, Charlie Weiss. Yeah, uh, Fisher, we're going to use Brady Quinn a little bit here. Here comes a play action. Look at this. Perfect to Jeff Samarja, Scott. Yeah, sucked up the safety nice on that one. Great play action fake. Protected Brady throughout this game. Then they kind of fell back a little bit. He wasn't as crisp, as crisp in the second half. Well, here in the first still, rolling out to his right. And just when you think he might run it, finds John Carlson getting his feet in there. Irish up 14-0. Still in the first 14-3. Quinn to Rima McKnight, who shows his strength, stays in bounds. They can't get him out. Extra point was blocked, so it's 20-3. Notre Dame not letting up though, blocking the field goal. Trevor Laws and here's Terrell Lambert picking it up, 76 yards. No one can catch him, not even Charlie Weiss. The Irish blowing him out, 39 to 17. Notre Dame chugging right along, got Army next week, and then USC. They still haven't learned to finish, and I think that's what drives Charlie Weiss's. Charlie Weiss crazy is he had his second team ready to go to finish the fourth quarter, yet they couldn't put Air Force away, and that's something they need to brush up on. I think they need to work on their defense next week against Army, and then all of a sudden you circle that date against USC because that's the next big, biggest game after Ohio State plays Michigan because if all these teams start to fall, and as you saw some fall today, Notre Dame could find themselves in the hunt at the end of the year. And what's a little weird is that Notre Dame, in a way, was Rooting for Cal to win today and right. rooting for USC later so that the win over USC and USC's potential win over Cal would be worth more to them. Exactly. And you don't want to get in the same situation last year against Ohio State where they couldn't play with them. They couldn't stop them defensively. They got to do something on defense to stop people. Yeah, and most importantly for Notre Dame, a lot of these one-loss teams are falling. Meanwhile, the Miami Hurricanes taking heavy hearts into their game today after senior defensive lineman Brian Pata was shot and killed outside his apartment just a couple hours after practice Tuesday night. A homicide investigation is ongoing while the Canes choosing to play today against Maryland, allowing them to focus on football for at least a couple of hours. And Maryland, a team on top of the Atlantic Division in the ACC. Second quarter, Terps up 7-0. Sam Hollenbach was electric in the first half. Yeah, I like the call back to up inside your own end zone. Take a shot right here. Miami coming with the blitz. I mean, he had a 65-yard touchdown followed up by a 96-yard touchdown to start the football game. Kirby Freeman, the quarterback for Miami. Oh, Ryan Hill drives. It. Miami could have had the lead. Just over a minute left. 14-13 Maryland on the punt return. Bruce Johnson hit by Isaiah Gardner forcing the fumble. Maryland takes it 14-13 and they storm the field there. Clemson trying to avoid a three-game losing streak at home against NC State. C.J. Spiller, the freshman, burning down the right sideline. 52 yards for the touchdown. Tigers up by seven. Early in the third, still up seven. Will Proctor. To Tyler Grisham, they're up by 14, but the Wolfpack gets back within seven. 14 7, the bubble screen picked off by defensive end Willie Young, and look at him go. State's second touchdown in less than a minute. We're tied at 14. 22 seconds to go. NC State down 20 to 14. Daniel Evans buying time to Lamar Barrett, goes up, makes the grab, but he stepped out when he came down. Scott, here's Was the he replay. Was he pushed out? Watch the arm of the defender. I mean, 
You go to review right there. He's in. He got in he a little the bit. Receiver out. Clemson gets the win. Georgia Tech clinching the Coastal Division today. Tashard Choice going in, completing a drive that took over 10 minutes against North Carolina. He had 41 yards on that drive alone. Late in the second, UNC in the red zone, but Joe Daly gets picked off by Kenny Scott, and that would happen to him once again toward the end of the first half here in the red zone, picked off by Jamal Lewis. And it was a 7-0 final as Georgia Tech holds on to win it 7 to nothing. And Virginia Tech, 23-0 winners over Kent State in Blacksburg. Brandon Orr, 72 yards and a touchdown. So we know Georgia Tech is going to be in the ACC championship game. Still a lot to be determined in the Atlantic Division. Yeah, I still think it was a big win for Maryland today. If you look at what they did, they sustained a lot of emotion that Miami brought with the death of Pata and how they were going to play. I thought Miami played pretty good. Freeman was okay, but Maryland controls their destiny. They got Boston College next week. Then they got to go through Wake Forest. If they get through those two, they're going to play for the ACC title against the Georgia Tech team and Maryland might get a BCS berth and we'll be partying. Yeah, back. come on. Even a former Maryland quarterback. Fear the turtle. You got to admit, Maryland Wake Forest to decide the division? When's the last time Maryland <laughs> beat Florida State and Miami in the same year? I don't think it's ever happened. Yeah, the Seminoles and Hurricanes. It doesn't say a lot go. for ACC football, but. No, no, but hey, some teams have to rise, others fall. And coming up, we'll get the latest from the Big Ten, Big East, and more, including a Marshall team that had a scare en route to East Carolina today, trying to spoil the Pirates' birth in the conference championship, and West Virginia's first game since losing to Louisville. And welcome back to Game Tracker Live. Scary moment for the Marshall football team. The charter plane taking them to East Carolina evacuated before takeoff because of smoke in one of the engines. It's been almost exactly 36 years since most of the Marshall team was killed in a plane crash on a return trip from East Carolina, a story that will be told in the upcoming movie, We Are Marshall. In the meantime, a game today at East Carolina. Late in the first half, the herd down 13. Ahmad Bradshaw bouncing outside, fights off a tackle with a vicious stiff arm. Powers his way into the end zone. Two touchdowns on the day for him. Marshall down six. On the ensuing drive, James Pinckney to a wide open Philip Henry. The Pirates up 20 to 7 at the half. At, you know, the kids just love that. Early in the fourth, ECU up nine. Some trickery. The option reverse. Andre Allison, the shake and bake. And then he steps back and throws it. Steven Rogers is there. East Carolina over Marshall. 33-20 the final. Big 10. Wisconsin, no John Stocko, no problem. Tyler Donovan looking deep to Luke Swan. 42 yards and he gets in. 17-14 Badgers at the half. In the fourth quarter, same score. Wisconsin at the goal line. P.J. Hill goes on in. 24-14 Badgers. Iowa trying to stay in it. Drew Tate been a rough season with injuries for him. Trey Strauss connecting with him. 24 yards. They're within three, but Bielema and his Badgers would hold back the Hawkeyes. 24-21 the final. And Minnesota over Michigan State, 31-18 the final there. Brian Capito with two touchdowns. Amir Pinnix with 113 on the ground. And Joe Pa missing a game for the first time in 29 years. At home recuperating while Penn State destroys Temple. 47 to nothing. Tony Hunt with 127 yards and three touchdowns. Tom Bradley running the team and joking. How soon would it be before Joe Pa calls one of the graduate assistants and tells him how to coach? I'm sure he's on the phone today, but here's the thing with Joe Paterno. People were calling for this guy's head along with Bobby Bounds two years ago. He resurrected Penn State last year. They had a great year. This could have happened to any coach last week. It was a freak accident. It wasn't because of age, but Joe Pa out for the first time in some time. And uh, maybe the beginning of the end. Maybe he sat back and thought, you know what? It's not bad coaching games from home. Yeah, well, he might have enjoyed it. He After he watches recruit. Anthony Morelli on TV, he doesn't want to go back. Yeah, right. I'm sure that between the bandages and the, will to, the willing to be on the sideline, it was a, an itchy day for Joe Pa indeed. And, all right, something we already talked about, the BCS as far as Notre Dame is concerned and the teams that are in the top 10 with them, like Cal, a team in control of the Pac-10, entering the day undefeated since losing the opener at Tennessee, but in trouble against Arizona. Let's go to the desert and see how this one turned out. Cal down 24-20, under three to play. Nate Long short of Deshaun Jackson, slips a tackle his third touchdown of the day also had a punt return of over 90 yards but wait wait a sec they're going to review this one and did he step out of bounds Ooh, right toe looks like it. if only he had smaller feet a few plays later longshore tipped and intercepted his third interception of the game arizona storming the field <laughs> a lot of field storming going on this week 
Arizona takes it. West Virginia against Cincinnati. Mountaineers coming off the loss to Louisville. Pat White to Brandon Miles. He gets a foot down. 14-3 Mountaineers. Same score a bit later. Steve Slayton breaking loose. Oh, what could have been for West Virginia? Steve Slayton with the big run here. Pat White hits a couple passes. Why couldn't you do it against Louisville? Slayton, one of the fastest guys in D1. They had the offense against Louisville, but no defense. White taking it himself. He fumbles, but it's recovered by Rayshon Bolden, and he dives in. Mountaineers beat the Bearcats bad 42-24. And oh yeah. South Florida over Syracuse 27 to 10. Greg Robinson yet to win a Big East game in his two seasons at Syracuse. Matt Grothy with a school record 364 yards passing in this game. And Pitt falling on the road in East Hartford. 46 wow. 45 in two overtimes. Amazing game. 46 45. The Huskies making a statement against the Pittsburgh team that some people thought would be the one that beats be Louisville, Louisville or beats right? West two Virginia. Weeks. That's the thing. And then Pitt lays one right there. But here's the thing West Virginia controls everything right now. If they beat Rutgers at home in two weeks, West Virginia is going to win the Big East and they're going to go to the BCS game. Yeah, if they all have one loss, it'll come down to their BCS ranking. Get, get used to hearing about the BCS this month. Coming up, we are going to get off the football field and talk hockey, soccer, and more as Danielle Sargent takes over here on Game Tracker Live, talking about a Minnesota team that has yet to lose since dropping their season opener. Plus, Hoops is underway. Hi, my name is Frank Vigata. I'm also known as Notre Dame Frank, and welcome to my Notre Dame home. Probably one of the biggest, craziest, nuttiest fans of Notre Dame football in the entire country. Actual piece of the rock in the old Notre Dame Stadium. I probably have three times as much stuff as I have in this room. I get the basement, my wife gets the rest of the house. It's a good deal. Come on, Rudy. Come on. We're going to the game. Come on. God, country, Notre Dame. Go Irish. 